So let's do it. All right. Three, two, one. Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to episode 284 of the KB Mod Podcast. It is July 2nd, 2017, a mere two days from one of the greatest American holidays. I almost said in the world. I, I was really going to say greatest <laughs> American holidays in the world, but that doesn't really make sense. July 4th, boys, on yeah, Tuesday. It's George Washington's up. birthday. George Washington's birthday. And, and, Abraham, Lincoln's and Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Lincoln's birthday. Donald Trump's birthday what? as well in that company. Uh, Barack Hussein Obama's birthday. Yeah. It's crazy. It's oh, nuts. Man. Pretty wild um, that every single president was born on July 4th. Yeah. It's, it, well, and you, it's actually a little known uh, thing that's actually written in the Constitution is that every person that runs for president has to have been born on July 4th. A lot of people don't yep. realize that. Yep. You have to be at so, least 35 years old and you have to be yep. born on July 4th. Born on July 4th, so... <laughs> Going to be some great celebrations. I'm uh, actually ordering a keg of Bud Light, and uh, I've gotten some illegal fireworks from New Jersey that I'm planning to blow my dick off with. So it should oh be a pretty fun time. That's I mean, the, by accident. The true American way. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, going to be a good time. But uh, no, it's good to be back. I was not here last week. Katie, were you here last week or no? I was not. You were not. So we were both absent last week. Brandon, I think, had to hold down, hold down the fort with Brad and no, I've, uh, Tim. I've swapped so. two cast members for two new ones. Two new ones, yeah. So we're back. Uh, Brad mm-hmm. is not here this week, obviously. He's out uh, gallivanting in Oregon, doing whatever the people in Life is the Life is Strange game do. Well, like, I mean, if, at- it, as, as people have seen with the new Far Cry 5, I think July 4th in Oregon, very different yes. from uh, yes. everywhere else. Very, very different. Very different. <laughs> I mean, if I'm to believe what I've pl- and what I've played through in Life is Strange, uh, whales show up on the beaches of Oregon, uh, the apocalypse, everywhere. emo teens, uh, art teachers mm-hmm. with preppy-looking glasses who commit murder. Sorry, spoilers. <clears throat> dogs that uh, text you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dogs that text you. Yeah, Life is Strange really opened my eyes to the happenings in Oregon. So I'm definitely excited for the Life is Strange prequel. It's going to be... Are you ready for that too, Katie? Are you excited about that? Oh, I'm excited. That an, yeah, that was an E3 uh, little treat. I guess we talked about then, but um, yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, yeah. I'm not really excited as much as uh, I'm really surprised. A lot of my friends are very excited for that game. Like, I'm still pretty indifferent on Life is Strange, but yeah. I was shocked to see how many people are really pumped for that. I mean, I love well, that franchise or love that game a lot, man. And not un- yeah. they loved it unironically where I loved it. But again, it, I, I, I say all this in the sense of that the game was not meant, was not my demographic, right? It was definitely aimed at a younger crowd. So right. I get it. It's fine. Hey, listen, and Katie, I know that I pretty much convinced you to not like the game, but if you like the game, you can like the game unironically. I don't want, I'm not going to judge you. No, 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 no. I okay. do like the game. I, I mean, I'm not going to change my opinion because of, you know, <laughs> people around me, but peer pressure. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. I think, I mean, it, there are some legitimate, really good things about that game that I was going for it. You know, yeah. like I think, uh, that last uh, chapter of the game is like one of the best mindfuck sections of, you know, any game. It's pretty mindfucky. Pretty I'm not going to lie. I'm with yeah. you on that. No, it, it did do some pretty decent things. And also for the price, um, yes. you can't really beat it. It was actually really reasonably priced. Even the new one's going to be like 17 bucks or something for the full, for all the episodes. Right, yeah. And they could absolutely get away with charging more for that. So hats yeah. off to them. I mean, compared to Telltale, like uh, Square, I think it's Square Enix, right? Oh, my God. Um, you know, they're yeah. actually giving us some decent content for the money. So anyway... I didn't actually mean to turn this into a hype for Life is Strange podcast, episode one, but... <laughs> quite an intro. Uh, quite an intro. Yeah. Um, I don't know how we got there from... I don't even I don't even know what's happening, right? How we got there from we're July 4th. We're talking about Brad. Brad in Oregon. That's right. It was That was the string. Man. Um, um, you know, I'm sure he's got a shotgun in, in hand right now. <laughs> he probably does. Uh, so, yeah. So, <laughs> no Brad uh, this week, but we've got uh, us three. How did your guys' weeks go? Anything... Uh, Anything exciting happening? What's what's been going on in in your lives? It's been great. Yeah, nice relaxing week. Let me tell you. Okay, tell me it's what uh, what went down when you say a you relaxing week. Yeah, what happened? What happened? Absolutely nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. And can I really complain? No. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes life just goes. You know, sometimes life just goes. You know. Yeah, I mean, and if it's not, if nothing's going terribly, uh, uh, you know, that can be a good week. Like you said, it's just a, a, a week of, yeah, a week of nothing means that it could have been a week of bad stuff. And you're saying nothing really bad happened to you this week. Exactly. Yeah. 
I was about uh, I was about ten minutes away from telling you guys, you know. Well, I mean, I would have been able to tell you guys the exciting time I had at Holiday World this week, but <laughs> stuff came up and I missed out and I wasn't able to go. But you know oh, what? What is, what is oh, Holiday oh, World? Holiday World. What is that? Holiday World and Splash and Safari? It's like a theme park. Oh, uh, okay. Is yeah. that an Indiana thing? I I'm gonna look it up right now. I'll tell you. To, I'm gonna have to assume oh, so. Yeah. Holiday World. Oh, Holiday World is the shit. Indiana. Yeah, it's right up Indiana there with uh, Indiana theme park. Huh. And wow, Splash I didn't Safari know it is a combination theme park and water park located near Interstate 64 and US 231 in Santa Claus. It's called Santa Claus, Indiana. Yes. Yeah. What the. Blew they my really, mind they really doubled down channel. on that theme park there. <laughs> they really <laughs> did, dude. Santa Claus, I mean, holiday. No bigger holiday yeah. than Christmas. So, makes sense. Okay. Right. But yeah, yeah so you didn't go. Why, did, why did you miss out on the theme park? Why didn't you go? That's not important. It's not important. Okay. But, you know, I wasn't able to go. But what is important is that I'm here and I'm happy and okay. I'm with my buds and I'm not letting it get to me because, you know, you don't want to spend your whole life, Yeah. you know getting pissed about not being able to go on some big ass water slides <laughs> but you know what yeah i always uh, say that great. that's <laughs> that's what my dad instilled in me he, one day he saw me sulk, <laughs> sulking over not going to dorney park which is a a pa park around here Ooh, uh, yeah, park. haven't heard of that dorney park and wire wild waddle, waddle, waddle i almost said wild waddle kingdom <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the plus size park for people like me because we all waddle because we're so fat but uh <laughs> Wild Water <laughs> Kingdom, and uh, yeah, he saw me sulking because I wasn't able to go because I didn't have enough money for tickets. And he said, "You know, son, don't spend your time being bitter about not going, being able to go on big ass water rides." And so I'm glad your dad instilled the same thing in you. Cool, yeah. It's it's awesome. as he uh, as he talked to me about Wild Waddle Kingdom, you know, Wild Waddle, Wild Waddle Kingdom. Okay, uh, well, I'm sorry you didn't come, Kitty, but Just I'm glad like... you're here, uh, cracking a cold one with the boys. That's good. Yeah, definitely. Okay. What about you guys? How's your uh, how your week's been going? It's been good, man. My week's been good. I, I I'll go, I guess, because I wasn't here last week, and the weekend the reason that I was away yeah, what have, was what have that, you been doing, Scott? Yeah, what have what have I been doing? I've been actually. I can finally say it. I've been procreating. Um, not actively. Oh, that happened that like three, like mm-hmm. a while ago. But no. So last weekend, I actually um, I've been sitting on the secret for a while, and so I guess people maybe listen to this podcast. Uh, and don't like or don't really engage much with the Twitch stuff or other stuff online and just are the, you know, the listeners, the offline listeners. Uh, yeah, I'm expecting a child. Uh, the due date. Speaking of Christmas, this is actually a perfect. This is all tying together. Yeah, speaking of holiday just, world. Speaking of holiday world. <laughs> maybe we should maybe we should go. Tab should go to holiday world and have the baby on her due date, December 25th. Uh, that's when the baby Santa to be Claus, close. Indiana. In Santa Claus, Indiana, yeah, how did. incredible would that be? Maybe on yeah, a ride. Maybe. Well. maybe on like yeah, a, she has to give birth right as she's going down the Pilgrim Plunge. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, the log flume. Go. And then because she might actually go with like a water birth or a natural birth. That way, we, dude, there's so many birds with one stone right there. Holiday baby in a holiday holiday theme place on a theme park. That's exhilarating. That can cause contractions and yeah, I mean, um, if she wants a, if she wants a water birth, there you go. That's actually incredible. I don't think any baby has ever been born on a log flume before. Actually, I should look that up. But <laughs> I've never heard of that. I was going to say, be, be careful about first. saying never. Uh, yeah, that's true. It probably has happened, actually. I really, really we do live in the United States the of America. Of I'll have you remember. That's that's true. You're, yeah, you're probably yeah, right. There's definitely a pregnant woman who's gone on a, a log flume and uh, had birth on it. It's probably but, been a lot worse things to yeah. have happened. I bet there's got to be protocol for that, like at the big theme parks, for just a woman going yeah. into labor at, the, at a theme park. Probably. You're probably, and I don't think you're supposed to ride theme park rides at a certain <laughs> point in your pregnancy, so <laughs> probably should stop You're not stop supposed that. to, but you know someone has. Oh, absolutely. You're right. You're right. Girls don't apply to me. <laughs> Baby comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, old Jenny had her little one on the Chuck E. Cheese Jurassic Park machine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's not even a theme park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen. I don't it's think all they perfected. have any rides that you're not supposed to ride when you're pregnant at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Are you pregnant? And why would they have to limit like what pregnant woman's riding right? It should be children. Like, <laughs> you all pregnant, you can't ride these rides. <laughs> it's too intense. 
<laughs> Not go black. Um, <laughs> oh my god, I don't know what's happening, but oh god, this is getting out of control. But yeah. Anyway, long story short, yeah, we were telling our family, and obviously, I told my stream and stuff, and, and everybody this weekend. So it was good. It's exciting. I'm I'm very excited. Um, but yeah, so December. December 25th is the due date. We don't know the uh, gender of the baby. We're going to know on the 10th, hopefully. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'll be happy with either. I'll be happy with either. People are like, now nah, you really want a boy. I'm like, I honestly don't. I don't have an agenda. I don't have an agenda. I'll be okay. I'll be good with uh, with either. But yeah, so that's the exciting news in my life. And it's been hard to keep a secret. Um, I mean, most people usually wait till the second trimester to to do it. But some people tell a little bit earlier. But, you know, it just depends on what you wanted to do. But we just wanted to wait a little bit and have all our ducks in a row and stuff. And uh, the way that we told our families was, was pretty cool. I had, um, well, Tab originally had the idea of, uh, cause a lot of times when we go over to my parents' house, we'll end up like just watching videos on YouTube or the internet in general. And cause we like to share memes, I guess we're a meme sharing family. It says a lot and, about your family. I think Yeah, <laughs> it does that. That's like a, a thing that we do, but we decided that we were going to prank them by, uh, being like, hey, I found this video or whatever. Let's, let's, let's watch it. And then I had the idea of saying, wouldn't it be funny if the video starts like buffering or, or trying to load and they think it's like internet issues and then we have some other effects go down and then the ultrasound picture of the baby comes in or whatever. Just kind of a fun way to tell them. And so the way that it uh, happened, I, I actually had uh, one of the guy who does a lot of the, uh, who does the graphics and editing for me uh, named Crazed Tom. He's a New Zealander and he's he's amazing. I was like, He's really good in After Effects. So I was like, hey, would you be willing to... It was only... It was a pretty short video, but I was like, I have an idea. And so the video that I actually used for the front of the... Um, for the front of the prank was an H3 video, which was a video about pranks. It gets very meta here. <laughs> and so... And they've seen H... Uh, they've seen the H3, Ethan, and the stuff before. So they were like... It, it would make sense that I would show them another one. And so he actually... After Effects, after effects, the shit out of it, and it's so good. There's actually a I did an announcement video yeah. on my YouTube, so if people after the after the fact actually want to go and take a look at a kind of different version of the video, uh, he he got the loading bar and everything. Like it looks exactly like if your internet was shitting out on YouTube. It's really well done. It was and, great. Um, yeah. yeah, and so um, anyway, it was really good, and they were so befuddled and baffled by by what was happening that at, like the oh god i it's obviously a podcast so i can't you guys can't see the actual reaction but um I tab recorded it but they after they finally they saw it was a baby and stuff they were super excited but my dad he was like i was so so thrown off by what was going on i thought somebody was hacking our network or like that the, he said at one point he was <laughs> like i thought the aliens were taking over he was like because i didn't know what what was happening because it started buffering i thought it was our internet <laughs> and then this image came in of this alien looking thing which was obviously the baby from the ultrasound he was like i was totally like we just totally mind up them and mm. um it went really well so that was fun so um but yeah it's good not to have the secret anymore and just be able to talk about it and not have Meaning to there was a lot of day like, zero Yes, um, baby's not even born yet, and it's already yeah. It's already it's, <laughs> it's literally didn't even have a choice. We <laughs> we put a meme upon it, so yeah. I think uh, I think the future for this child is definitely going to involve memes. I mean, obviously, if I'm the father, then there's really no way around that, and there'll be lots of explaining to do as the child, you know, gets older and older, and who knows? I mean, let's just say that we're going to keep the internet away from them as long as as long as is possible and then you know once they get into their angsty teen years and i try to discipline them they're going to be like hey uh you know that one inbox episode and i'll be like i thought i blocked that on your <laughs> on your browser you're not supposed to be able to see that stuff who knows but yeah no uh i'm, I'm very excited about it so cool. um congratulations yeah. thank you uh, appreciate that yeah that's really yeah. excellent news yeah can't wait to impart my anime knowledge on that uh, child yeah you know what katie anime. you can be the anime i mean i don't have anything against anime in particular so you can be the anime uncle if you would like, I'm, I'm down okay. with that. Cool. Baby I'm shower, I'll have a body pillow and uh, we'll be good. <laughs> <Body pillow. laughs> body pillow. Um, but yeah, what about uh, you, Brandon? Anything exciting this week? How was No, how was not, week? not really. It's pretty, pretty Crazy. relaxing. Uh, we've got, you know, we got a four day weekend with July 4th. So just been, uh, been playing some games and watching TV and kind of taking it easy. It's been nice. Nice. I saw you were playing some World of Warcraft. I thought, wow, something <laughs> other than Hearthstone. And, no, we, uh, we've been over this before. That's actually John. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've uh, crawled I've, with the name. Yeah, yeah. no, I've, I've just been, I've been playing. I played a little bit of Hearthstone actually, but uh, we'll get into what we've been playing. But uh, 
what if we, we have to do this section because it's now it's in the dock it's an official thing what have we been eating mm. we do we absolutely do um i'll go I first had i had some, a uh, last night yeah. uh, i had a chicken pot pie from a place mm. around here i had it delivered and uh and it was it was it was pretty good i hadn't had a chicken pot pie in a while but i was just in the mood for something a little bit different i got that and a quesadilla and a salad that is a work stuff. Okay, hold on, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> I was with you on chicken pot pie, but then you threw cases. Was this all in the same meal? Well, actually, so <laughs> that's so I, weird. So I ordered <laughs> I ordered more than I expected to eat. Okay. Because okay. because you know they charge you the delivery fee and all that, and I'm I uh, my wife's so out of town, an, so I figured time. I actually ended up eating the quesadilla today. But mm. I mean, had I been hungry enough, I would have eaten them both in the same sitting. But I, d I agree that it was a somewhat, somewhat unusual choice of pairing. Odd pairing. Okay, yeah. no, I feel you though. If it's like if you're gonna get it delivered anyway, you can eat it. Yeah, exactly. Time. And like a quesadilla is <laughs> is really easy to throw in the fridge and reheat. Like it basically yeah. tastes the same out of the exactly. microwave. So I was just uh, helping Great. helping future me uh, have an easier meal, which I actually ate pop just pie, before the stream. Yeah. Chicken pot pie is something that I absolutely love. My mom makes a mean chicken pot pie. I haven't had it in years, though. I, it's just not a normal. Yeah. You know, not that I think many people do, unless maybe they're eating a lot of home cooking or it's like a. But man, it's. I mean, it's, it's just. It's kind of. I feel like chicken pot pie. We talked about casserole before. Chicken pot pie is yeah. kind of casserole like in that you just kind of throw <laughs> vegetables and chicken inside the pie, yep. and it's it's yep. just delicious. It really is. I bet your mom makes a mean chicken pot pie, Katie. No. My mom does make some excellent cooking. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, in well, particular, does she do ever do chicken pot pie for you guys? I mean, she I know she's a casserole queen, but I'm sure at one point. Oh my god. I'm sure at one point she's uh she's I'm not even being facetious. You always talk about your mom's casseroles. But, oh, I, I know what your intent is. You're you know <laughs> I, I, I literally have no one I have right. no intent. Wait, do you think casserole queen is like a, a double entendre? Because I can assure you, I don't know what it what it, what it is if, if it is one. Okay, okay, all right. I just uh, you know, I've been made up for my casserole. Uh, don't be so. Before. Listen, Brad's not here this week. Okay, I'm not. I don't have an. Yeah, no, so I can put my guard down, right? You okay. can put your guard down. Don't be so offended. I was. I'm not even making a pun. <laughs> I'm actually looking up casserole queen now. At, on, on, <laughs> To see if there is uh, something, uh, let's see, Urban Dictionary. Just go Google it with safe search right. off and see what comes up. Yeah. I'll let oh, you go. God. But um, it's like a deep web website. Casserole Queen. Casserole God, Queen. That's, that's another good Steam name, Casserole Queen. That but uh, no, I, um, mm -hmm. I, I had a pretty good dinner. You know, I had some homemade chicken strips, some good mac and cheese, homemade mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh a pizza some cereal uh no i'm just kidding <laughs> that was a little that was a little jab at brandon like wait like, are we are we going through multiple meals because i feel like oh, eating yeah. eating no, cereal just, like, just with your chicken said. strips that's, yeah. that's <laughs> a little a weirder pizza, you know here's no, a, here's a joking. question because i actually just bought these because they were on sale at the grocery store and i was like i need a i usually have like one cereal in rotation i don't eat cereal super often but it'll be like it'll last me like a month or so right i'll be like hey i want to eat some cereal and not necessarily for breakfast, just like whenever. And uh, I there was Golden Grams uh, on Ooh, sale. Yes. And Golden Grams is a cereal that I don't like. It's not a, usually a go-to, but I was like, man, I could go for some Golden Grams. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. man, the pros of Golden Grams when the milk first hits. I mean, gold, they're great. They, I mean, they're delicious. Yeah. But those motherfuckers get soggy, soggier quicker than almost any cereal I, I have ever been able to recall. Because I, mm. I I had some this morning and I poured milk on them. And I swear to God, I was gone for. I peed. It took like 15 seconds to pee. I came back and they were already starting to turn. And I was like, this is crazy. But anyway, Golden Grams is delicious. Mm. I mean, it's hard to find a bad cereal. But I, I feel like that's one of those cereals that's kind of relegated to like a lower. Like, what would you say Golden Grams as far as a tier? Like, let's say three tier cere three tiers of cereal. Um, where does Golden would, Grams fall? One, two, I would or say, three. Probably I would say a two. high. Yeah, high two. Yeah. High two. That's fair. Yeah. I think I it wouldn't be the first choice, like of any of the tier one cereals. I I can think of a few I'd grab before Golden Grams, but it's a nice change of pace. It is exactly that's how I felt about it. I was like, because I could go to some standbys. I mean, like, there's really no, there's actually, I guess I really would have a standby, but yeah, like you said, the higher tier cereals where you're like, yeah, that's a no brainer, and 
I think the fact that it was on sale really did did push me towards it because it was like a it was like a big box for like a dollar fifty or something. I was like, wow, Dude, yeah. You know the one I thing I've, I noticed, uh, I like when, when I when I started buying my own cereal. So this was like a while uh, ago, obviously. But you know, when your parents are buying your cereal, you right. don't really think about what the cost is. But cereal no, is don't. actually like not that cheap. Like some of the small mm. boxes of cereal, are like four oh, sure. bucks. Yeah, and I and I noticed that, and I was like, man, I. Is this really, you know, I start looking at the value, like you're saying, Scott, like Golden Grams for $1.50. Yeah. Now that's like, tier one value. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I remember, you know, being a kid, like at Reese's Puffs, that was the shit. And, you know, mm-hmm. a day when, like, I, it, went, it didn't occur to me that they were just like, oh, we didn't get them because they weren't on sale and their normal price is pretty expensive. And I'm thinking, what the fuck have I done? What did I do now to deserve this? I, I specifically asked for Reese's Puffs. <laughs> you come home with. You know, I mean, they come home with bagged cereal of some sort. Yes, like the the car seat bags, right? (laughs) Like my, so my, God, I've told the story before a million times on this podcast. But like my mom was a kind of mom who would buy all the like the bland. Like she didn't really believe in super sugar. I'm I'm trying to think of the most sugary. Like we had Fruit Loops, um, but it didn't get much more Uh, exotic. Sugar Smacks, man. Sugar Smacks. We would have okay. We would have Sugar Smacks sometimes. I guess if they were doesn't on get sale, any really sugarier than sugar we, smacks. No, it doesn't. And I guess she would buy those, but I feel like it was only for. We would never see those normally. It was mostly what was on sale, or like not healthy, but like not like cocoa pebbles. Like those were never hitting our house. Right. Um, yeah, like those crisp. kind of cereals, cookie crisp. No, yeah. never allowed. My mom was the kind of mom who <laughs> bought the unfrosted pop tarts. Like it was somehow better to buy them. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even know you could oh, buy them. No. But she would buy them. Why not? And then, at that point, why not just have toast? Of course. And that's what we'd always say to her. Like, Mom, why are you buying them? She's like, you don't need the icing, too. It's already bad enough. You don't, You want to know that we actually <laughs> look? I don't know if this is still true. I swear to God, I'm so old that I've told the story a million times in this podcast. But we one time show we actually looked at the calories. And somehow the, fr- the unfrosted Pop-Tarts were higher calories than the frosted. I don't know how. I don't know why. I don't know if it was like something they did with the process. Like maybe they added more stuff in the middle like the the it's jelly the or whatever flavor of the mm-hmm. jelly and the same flavor so like strawberry that's... frosted versus i'm gonna actually see if that's still true yeah but that's... basically that, that doesn't either, line up either, for me but neither one is like no, healthy no but mm-hmm. I, I distinctly remember actually being worse by like five calories more or something inexplicably and even if it was even it just proved the point right yeah that like what it doesn't matter like why yeah. uh if you're so... eating a pop tart you're not eating it for the nutritional value no exactly exactly yeah you forfeited that card like so just go all out but um yeah so like what you're saying like so also that's when you become an adult and you can buy any cereal that you want and this goes back to where we had a discussion not that many months ago about the choice and about how there's really not there's not many bad cereals no there's it's hard to find a bad cereal even even Uh, some of like the healthier cereals are not what i would consider bad they're just they're not like my preference but even even I'm trying to think like I don't know kicks or you know some other yeah. some or other just generic cornflakes yeah cornflakes like they're not yeah. great but they're not bad like mm-hmm. I would I would still eat them yeah sure I'll still eat them absolutely I don't know if, um, is, I don't know if that's the power of like is that just the power of like the medium because you're you're pouring milk on it which is delicious or I think so I think part of it is like, just that like it's hard to make something bad when you're adding milk to it because milk is just yeah. really good. Milk, milk saves it a lot of the time, yeah. and also like when you can when you can get when you can combine the milk with kind of the sugary cereal. Like that's the the best thing about Cookie Crisp, for instance, is right. not the cereal. It's the, the it turns the, the milk effectively into chocolate milk. Yeah, so you're kind of you're doubling up on on the pleasure there. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and can I say Slam Tarts looked up my uh, claim and he I am right. Unfrosted are ten more calories than frosted Pop Tarts. I How? Knew it. That's I don't know. It doesn't. I, I don't know the process behind just when, it. Just when you think I you know. understand science, exactly. Yeah. So oh, that's, well, and that's when we shot. showed her. She was like, "No, I don't believe you." And we were so proud of our victory. We we're like, "Mom, I told you, <laughs> just buy the frosted." And actually, to her credit, I think at this point I was in high school and like <laughs> junior, so a lot of my life I'd, I'd gone with unfrosted pop tarts. But she did, to her credit, when we showed her that, she was like, "Okay, I'll buy frosted." And she did start buying frosted. I only got it for a year or two before I moved out, but <laughs> she did. Uh, she did. She didn't deny science, so that's good. Um, okay, yeah. So anyway, that's that's really. I'm trying to think of anything of no, anything else of note that I that I ate this week other than the cereal. Um, 
yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. Oh, I was going to ask this because I did, I did, I did mention this is this is in relation to food, and we'll move on to games in a second. But I <gasps> talked about how I bought a, a, I finally convinced Tab to get a toaster oven, and we bought a Ooh. toaster oven recently. And about how ba- basically I find that there's two, there's people in two different camps when it comes to toaster ovens. There's people that don't understand toaster ovens because they've never had one and are like, why? If you have a microwave, why? Or if you have a regular toaster, why would you need a toaster oven? And that was her. And I spent so many. I didn't even spend much time on it because I was like, whatever, it's not something I care that much about, or I thought. And then one day, Mm -hmm. she tried to warm up something in the microwave, and it came out super soggy, as things Mm -hmm. do in the microwave. (laughs) And I was like, if we had a frickin' toaster oven, those things would be not soggy, and they would be edible. And she was like, okay, fine. We're going to go to Target. We'll buy a toaster oven. So you go. Black & Decker toaster oven was on sale for 23 bucks, dude. Big unit. Looking nice. It has all the features. Instantly heats up to like 450 degrees if you want it to. And I'm telling you, man, when I say that there's a, there's a few things I'm proud of in my life for, for, I mean, Tab's younger than me, for sh- opening her eyes. The first time she toasted a bagel in that mother effing toaster oven, <laughs> she was like, she's like, I can watch it toast. I was like, that was a feature I didn't even think to tell you about. Exactly. You can see it happening. So you can see the doneness. You can cook. Uh, I mean, you can bake in a toaster oven. It has so many advantages. I just think it's it's <laughs> for warming like pizza up and stuff and not if you have a gas, obviously a gas oven right. or a gas stove, it's like you don't want to warm up your whole oven to warm up a slice of pizza. Yeah. If you do it in the microwave, it's soggy. I'm sorry. It is. There's no way around that. Yeah, it's when you, need to, when you oven, need to crisp something, you basically can't replace a toaster oven. Exactly. Um, it's just I I feel like and for like little snack stuff, especially too, like if you're not or if you're just cooking for one or two people like. I'm not saying like it can replace a full oven, but you can it, a, a toaster oven is so versatile for the stuff that you can you can do for that. So and I and some people in my chat were like, well, what would you rather have? Because I was talking about this the other day. They're like, would you rather have a microwave or a toaster oven? I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna have both. I'm not a pleb. But if I really <laughs> so I was like, because someone was like, I only have room for a toaster oven and it sucks. It's like, okay, I understand. There's a yeah. lot of great things that you can do with a microwave. Yeah. But you know. Yeah. You want uh, you want both. So what are your, what are your guys' takes? Did you grow up with toaster ovens? Did you not? Uh, my, I mean, not, not really, but I, I I understand the value of one. Uh, we don't really have the shelf space or the 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 counter space for one in our current kitchen, so mm-hmm. I don't have one okay. here. But uh, but I do definitely understand what you mean. Like when you're heating up something like pizza, where it's gonna it's gonna like you're gonna get better results from a toaster oven. So. But we don't really have the room for it. But if we did, it's like if you have the counter space for it, like you're saying, absolutely. Like uh, toaster ovens are very cheap, and it's worth yeah, getting cheap. one. They last for a oh, long yeah. time. I think, and I swear, I, got, I swear to God, I'm not sponsored by some sort of toaster oven lobby group. <laughs> Can't do. I, I promise. No, and it was it was that I grew up with one for years, and I guess I just didn't have one for so long, and I forgot, and I just rediscovered. I'm just like, man, it's so nice to just do little things with even stuff that you would just forget that you would be like, I would normally use a microwave for. And also like the ones that they have today, they're cheap. I'm telling you, dude, this thing instantly heats up to 400, 450 degrees. Like you don't have to preheat the thing. You just put your stuff in there. And if it says six minutes on 400 or whatever you're doing, that's basically it. It's like done. It's so fast. So anyway, I don't know why I'm so invested. I guess I'm invested (laughs) in this because I was excited that I turned tab into a toaster oven fan i guess that's that's all and so um katie yeah. did you did you grow up with one i forget I, did well i had one but i used it kind of sparingly like i mean bagels for sure used them you sure but there's one important there's one important item i i had with a toaster oven that i want to bring up and get your opinions on toaster okay. strudel what's the verdict oh toaster strudel as a product yeah. um, toaster strudel is like a better pop tart <sighs> Ooh, strong Katie, um, so so did did he just even... actually did did, 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 did pop tart the pop tart did Kellogg's just nuke Katie for even bringing up toaster strudel? What just possible? It's possible. Yeah, we had we had um, toaster strudel when I was growing up, and yeah, it's, it's pretty good. But again, it's one of those things that you look back on it and it is not healthy at all. Oh no! Of, I mean, don't, a very didn't you have to put, didn't you top it with like icing or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It came with icing packets. So you had to kind of heat the icing packets up in your hands. You had to kind of like, you know, sort of uh, put them in between your hands, kind of, kind of rub them together a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. Was, that's right. I, I like toaster strudel was like tier one pop tart. Like pop tarts are tier two. Pop tart or uh, toaster strudel was really good. 
I never really had them that much, but I remember them being delicious the few times I ever tried them or my mom got them on sale or something. I do, I do recall. Yeah. So I like them. I guess if we can okay. get KD back, He's, he yes. puts, he puts right. question marks like we know why he disconnected. <laughs> yeah, Incredible right. stuff. Yeah, the calls. Yeah, KD, this is, uh, this is, this is great. End. This is great podcast material here. Yeah, I'm people definitely just not listening have to, to it. listening to dead air while someone who disconnected <laughs> tries to figure out what's going on. Oh, he's back. I don't okay. understand. Incredible. What? That could have only been foreign work. Like I guarantee, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with my connection. I'm just saying. You meant started. You brought up toaster strudels and you got nuked. <laughs> I, I, I have nothing more to say on the topic. Yeah, I think we're good. Well, I like my internet connection. I like to <laughs> big strudel. Big strudel coming in. Big strudel, yeah. Um, let's talk about what we've been playing this week, though. We'll move on from topics that get Russians to DDoS, Katie, and kick them off of the <laughs> call. Um, Brandon, what you've been playing this week? Uh, so like I said earlier, I, I've been playing a little bit of Hearthstone. Um, just enough to, I don't know, just enough to like get to level, to, to rank 20 and get my, uh, get my card back. So played a little bit of that. Um Mostly just been playing Battlegrounds though. So that's been same story as same story as most weeks, but Battlegrounds still still going strong. Dominating. They had right. a they had a new patch. I was on kind of a um kind of a drought with wins. I have been I've been playing for like, you know, the past week and I've been getting a bunch of top five finishes and just you know, mm-hmm. just not just couldn't clinch the win. Right. Just those frustrating games where Something happens and you can't clinch the win, and that happened like four or five times in a row. Um, but I finally I was playing with uh, with Jimmy Woods and Hunt last night, mm. and we won a duos game. Uh, nice. And I, I clutched it at the end, killing Jimmy had died, and I and I killed the final two guys. So that felt really good. I felt like I kind of reset myself. Mm-hmm. You know, you kind of you go more and more on tilt as you can't seem to win a game. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just it's so it's so good. Like the game just keeps getting better. I, we were talking about it a little bit before the cast, but yeah, it's we it's were. just like the game is just on such a good trajectory. Like it seems like they're doing everything right. And you were saying, Scott, you're worried that they're going <laughs> to screw something up because it's like it's too good. The honeymoon yeah. phase is not ending, it's and it not always right ends. Now. And this is early access. I mean, we're not even in full release yet. I mean, I know that that's why they're working so hard to get everything performance wise, but they're like genuinely listening to the community. They're patching st- like. Even little things that are just like that you would go, well, I mean, we don't really need that. It makes the game easier to play or nicer or just but like that stuff too. I mean, we're going to talk about this a little bit later because we are going to talk about the actual stuff that's in the patch somewhat. But and they're not um, and they're not doing the easy cash grab of cosmetics. That was the other thing was that they're actually making the game better. And, you know, there's other games that we that will remain aimless that, you know, would have <laughs> At this point, with the amount of copies that they've sold, gone. I mean, even if we had just one crate where people can start, uh, you know, trying to get better cosmetics, we could make so much more money. Right. I think and it's not it's, doing uh, that. it's kind and of makes, yeah. kind of honorable that they haven't implemented um, something on top of that thirty dollars price point yet, which I I think is some someone may say that's dumb because you know like you could strike all the irons hot and make a lot more money and maybe that allows. Yeah them to pour even more money into the, the actual development of the game but i think there is something noble about not not rushing something out just just as a cash grab because i think exactly. that's sort of what it would look like and a lot of what i feel like that game is built on right now is this hope and like the the reputation they've built so far which is that they really are paying attention to the game and they're implementing community feedback and all of that and i feel like that's that's kind of tough to earn and it's easy to lose. So Absolutely. they've been doing everything right thus far, but they have to, you know, one misstep and the community can turn on you. Exactly. Yeah, no. And so far it's just, it really is. I mean, it's improving with every patch. Um, and we will actually talk a little bit about that. And I, I don't want to steal the thunder from that, but so mostly PUBG then pretty much yeah. your, yeah, mostly your it's been, uh, just, I've been, I've been enjoying, um, duos a lot like i think the more that i play i think duos is is just the best way to play the game yeah i agree um and so i've been finding myself like when you know squads is a lot of fun but i really just want to find some consistent people to be able to play with in duos because i find that i basically i I never really 
get upset in duos. Whereas in squads, mm. <laughs> I find, you know, it's it's just easier to get upset about things because you have to coordinate for four different people to get on the same page. And sometimes yeah. you, your squad ends up losing, you know, because one person strayed a little too far from the group or something else, right? And there's like, sometimes there's it's easy to blame, but in duos, like the blame is almost always at least partially on you. And so I, I feel like it's it's just a, every game's rewarding. You can point to reasons why you lost and a lot of it has to do with your own, you know, your own personal skill. Yeah. Definitely. I like, and I know what you mean about the win thing. I've been playing a lot of PUBG as well. And I did get, we did get, I did get one win actually uh, during some sessions, but we had one session where we had six second places in one session. Mm. Wow. And that was like legit second places where it came down to like clutches or like one person left. It was nuts. And it was just like, oh, you just start to, to tilt a little bit. But even that game does not, I still tilt way more encounters. Like, even at my most frustrated, Battlegrounds does not like does not tilt me to the point that I'm like, man, I'm just not going to play this game anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where with Counter Strike, I'll just be like, I need to not play this game for a couple of days. I need to, I need to calm <laughs> down. So I don't know if that's a result of. I mean, I have a lot of history with with Counter Strike, so that's probably part of it. But even when I get frustrated at Battlegrounds or something doesn't go my way, um, I just don't feel that same level of of rage. And I agree. I think duos is where the game. Uh, shines the most. I think that's probably what it was, you know, game mechanic wise and stuff. It's really what it was designed for. Um, but also maybe I'm playing, I'm playing usually almost every time I'm playing in squads. So those, those games are a little bit more silly too. So, and like you said, there's so many more variable variables when you're trying to deal with three other people yeah. <laughs> or you know, so like stuff can go wrong and you can't take it that you're just like, well, you know, it happens. Yeah. So and, and just like l- there's less available space to loot sort of like when you're right. Sometimes when you're in duos, you'll go to a place uh, on the map where in squads, there's always going to be a squad there. But in right. duos, sometimes people will, they'll shy away from, you know, big towns or something. And you might get a whole town to yourself to loot in duos. And so right. I feel like you, you, you always have a chance in duos where sometimes like in squad games, some of the games just aren't like, aren't necessarily winnable because of the mm-hmm. circumstances. Yeah, no, totally agree. Um. Okay. Cool. So PUBG. That's pretty much for me too. I've been playing a lot of Battlegrounds, some Counter Strike. Um. But yeah, a lot of Battlegrounds, especially just since the patch that we're going to talk about a little bit later. It's just the game's running so much better than yes. it did when it first came out. It's just noticeably better every patch. What about you, Katie? What do you what have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing some Battlegrounds as well, but uh, a bit more than that. Uh, mm-hmm. Let me think. So, uh, I played. The first chapter, and that's all I will play, of the mm. Batman Telltale game. <laughs> <laughs> and, I played uh, the first chapter of that game too. Yeah, that's funny. And I was like, nope, was. no more. Yeah, I went into it with you know the the, old, the good old uh, cautious optimism, you know, and uh, yeah, some of those animations, that opening sequence, are it, it was terrible. I thought the I, the story didn't really grab me at all. Uh, the gameplay was it was very repetitive, very telltale. Uh, mm-hmm. It was very telltale, and uh, a lot of it was uh, they made you do these like detective sequences yeah. where you have to really just waste your time, like just connecting, interacting, yeah, with trying people. to match the what order they want you to match it in. Yeah, for there's the, no, no, yeah, it's like you're trying to solve a mystery of something, but there's no aha moment. There's just oh my god, I'm finally done with this section. And, yep. you know, starting chapter two, that's the first thing they want you to do. It's just, oh, my God, I couldn't do it. You know, maybe the story wasn't that bad. <clears throat> it's but, almost uh, like Telltale continues to pump out these fucking awful cash grabs using yeah. buying IP licenses on an engine that should have been put to bed, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. It's crazy. Yeah, and that's... they still get away with it and sell millions and millions of dollars of copies because people suck their dicks. I don't know. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know how that would happen, you know? <laughs> But yeah, so definitely not going to be finishing that. Uh, I played a game called The Bucket Detective. I don't know if uh, you guys have heard of this. Uh, have yeah, you, you remember me talking about the that? game? This, uh, well, it's the the next game from this guy uh, who made this game on Steam that's free called The Static Speaks My Name. It was like a short, single-player, free-to-play, little kind of like messed up, kind of dark humor like story. 
was like first person exploration. Yeah, that had to do like suicide or something. Mm. Yeah, and this is his newest game, and it was on sale for what two ninety nine on the summer sale. So it he the the game openly says it's like forty five minutes long. So mm. I picked it up, and uh, that was one of the <laughs> one of the weirdest games I've ever played. I'm not going to spoil it at all, but it's. Uh, the guy making these games has really made it an unnamed for himself. Like he's really, he's really uh, solidified his identity in gaming. Mm. Like uh, like his his trademark style, really dark humor, not afraid to handle certain topics. And uh, yeah, it was like the premise of the game is like you're this guy who is trying to write this book, and it's just terrible. And so you find yourself. Uh, completing this ritual for a cult trying to resurrect their dark lord in exchange for divine inspiration to finish your novel and it just mm. gets stranger from there and it's weird it's it's really cheap uh, it's a good game to stream uh because just going off of chat reactions I actually played through the entire thing on stream but <laughs> yeah it was, it was good yeah i uh the five different endings but um that yeah, sounds that interesting time. yeah cool yeah but the uh the main thing uh is a game <laughs> Uh, called Danganronpa. It's like a murder mystery visual novel that uh, I've I've really blown through it in the past week, uh, which I finished. Like I, I can't remember the last time. time well, bleh, the last time the game has made me stay up until like six a.m. to keep playing it. You know, several nights in a row. But uh, the story of that game is really good. It's like a bunch of like high school students all get trapped in high school, and it's like the only way out is if you kill somebody. But if you get found out you die hmm. but if you don't get found out then you get to leave and everyone else dies so it's like friends and uh like um what am i trying to say like abusing like the trust in other people it, it's just got a really good story and uh i was pretty surprised with like what they did with the gameplay of it but yeah it was good and it's on sale on your for steam it's like 14.99 you can get like the 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 bundle with the first and second game but yeah that was a really good game um but yeah other than that not much I did forget to mention that I played Lawbreakers. Um, oh, that's right. As well. And I, uh, man, I actually enjoyed the time I had with it. Uh, it ran pretty well. Um, I liked a lot okay. of the classes. It's, I don't know how to describe it other than, um, well, Bayer's actually in this chat, but somebody from my, my community and also the community, but Bayer uh, described it as if the Overwatch team had made like a doom inspired version of the game kind of hmm. and i kind of and i can yeah. kind of see that because it's very it's very fast um uh it's you know tries to be a little bit more edgy um there's definitely op classes in it um i don't know what exactly where it's going to fall on the i don't know it's hard to say because for for like uh the hardcore like fps enthusiast who likes like, cause you have to be very accurate. Um, you know, obviously I'm sure the game will be balanced as it goes, but it's a, got a lot of like the Twitch kind of shooting stuff that you like in, in, in more classic shooters like Unreal and Quake and stuff like that. Um, you can be very precise. So I, I think it, I think it definitely will have some legs. I just don't know if it's going to, I mean, it's a $30 game, which is one thing, which I think the price point is going to be going to be pretty fair for that. I don't know if I'm going to end up picking it up mm. right away, um, but it's not a $60 game. So I think, I think that probably gives it a little bit more of a chance and I could definitely see it being uh, competitive uh, down the road. And it, I, I did enjoy the time I had with it. I actually want to play more of it uh, this week. I think the beta goes through the fourth, maybe, I th maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it actually already ended, but I thought it would actually was into, into this week as well. Um, and so, yeah, I, I recommend if you get a chance to get a, get a key or, or try it or whatever, definitely give it a try. we would be interested to hear your guys thoughts on it. I'll go through the fifth. Okay, cool. So give it nothing play tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I saw uh, uh, Cliffy B talking about it. I think at the PC gaming show at, at E3, and you know, he's I think he's saying all the right things. Like they want it to be a competitive game. Uh, he was yeah. talking about how you know their beta is a real beta. It's not a marketing beta. Like they're they're taking yeah. all the data in to uh, to polish the game and like tweak the balance and stuff. Um, so I think you know I trust that they want that game to be. To be a good competitive experience um Definitely. it's just i think they're they're launching into kind of a crowded market where you you've got like overwatch you've got quake champions you know trying to make a 
a run at that same type of experience yep. in a way. Exactly. And I'm just like, I'm not sure how many, how many people are down for a competitive first person shooter experience where they're going to want to play just that game and get really good at it and play it all the time. Cause I don't really play, I don't even really play games like that. Uh, hardcore like i used to so right right like you're saying i think 30 dollars sounds like a fair price for that game but i'm not sure i'll pick it up right off the bat just yeah. because i you know i've got other stuff to play and i'm not sure that i think maybe the maybe the beta will change my mind but yeah i, I should give that a try definitely yeah i mean i think the skill cap is going to be incredibly high it's definitely for the diehard uh, I mean, I know it's on console and stuff like that, but this—I mean—the game is is made to be uh, played on PC. There's just yeah. the movement and just the stuff that you can do, and it. it's really, really impressive. Uh, so, I don't know. I hope uh, I hope it ends up uh, at least having like maybe. I don't think it's going to be the biggest, definitely, of any of those kind of games, but I definitely think it could get a solid following. And if it's supported, which I'm pretty sure it will be by his by his team, um, it it has it has a chance. So. Yeah, it'll be interesting definitely to see if, if like any sort of esports scene crystallizes around that game. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, all right. Let's move on to uh, just mentioning again that Katie Zen. When is uh, first of all, Katie Zen? I want to make sure you know where the KB Mod Land is this year. Like in what? Uh, I believe it's Philadelphia. <laughs> I know you're showing me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. yeah. Um, so tell tell them about it. Yeah. I have to, uh, you know, make sure I buy the right plane ticket. But, make sure uh, you come to the right city. Yeah, the right city. Yeah, but uh, Extra Life is going down in Pittsburgh on August 18th through August 20th. It's going to be mm. tons of fun, and I am confirmed going, which uh, I don't think I've straight up said on the podcast before. But mm. yes, I'm definitely going this year, so Hell, I'm very yeah. excited. I'm very yeah. excited too. That's going to be yeah. great. Have but we're going to have to think of something to do, like. I need to. Mm. I don't know how uh, like strict the schedule is for stuff going on, but yeah, no, definitely. We got We got to take advantage of this. No, we'll do something. We'll, like you're saying, like do like some kind of um, incentive or whatever. Figure out a fun mm-hmm. incentive to do together. Yeah. Well, mainly I want to just force you to play Dark Souls. Is one. I was, oh, I was gonna say yeah. I mean, dude. I mean, I'm down. <laughs> we can we can do that. You can sit there and try to coach me through Dark Souls. I mean, we could do that. I was thinking maybe even something more like a, some really wee bass game could be could be funny too. Because oh shit, just like I, the am, most. I don't really have any experience in any of those. So <laughs> that could be fun. I'm sure there's something on my Steam library that will that'll qual- qualify for that. But yeah, exactly. But yeah, yes, it's, the game. it's gonna be exciting. Go no, go ahead. This is you. No, I'm 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 with you. It's gonna be tons of fun. So. Yeah. Keep the keep eight eighteen through eight twenty on your goddamn calendars, and uh, I know we're just it's coming up. Uh, it's coming up quicker than quicker than expected, but definitely we're very excited. So uh, also there is a review up on the website of Locks Quest that you can check out. We also have a website, of course, kvmod.com. Uh, it is by Justin. Take a look at that. This and, Locks Quest uh, review is apparently apparently quite the, the, yeah. This is. I think a review that a, re, a, re, a review that you read for the writing and the humor, because it uh, apparently is not a very good game. No, mm-hmm. he goes off. <laughs> yeah. I won't spoil it. You should definitely check it out. But he definitely <laughs> goes off. Uh, check out, of course, the forums uh, have been very active, and uh, also check out uh, the multi stream, of course, which I'm assuming you're using that for all of your. Um, multiple perspective streams. We won't say the names of some other competitors that do it way worse than multi-stream, but uh, we'll leave I, that We'll leave that out. I just looked at the Locks Quest review and the, uh, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but the summary box at the end is just blank and it's just, it's just rated one star and it just says, it just says garbage game. <laughs> garbage. <laughs> Damn, you just spoiled it. But yeah, you have to read the review. But yeah, yes. no, I mean, obviously, if you, I'm sure you're going to just scroll down and see the review and see the one star review. Like, we, we, I don't think I spoiled much. Like, the intent is that you're not going to buy this game. I'll just give it's you a pretty one good, more. It's a pretty good article. <laughs> I'll give you one more tidbit, though. This is towards the end. It's not the last thing he says. He says, this review has been poorly written, poorly thought out, and poorly structured, which I think is fitting for a game of this caliber. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just, Justin goes in. There's no oh, mercy. Man. He's upset that he had to play through this. So <laughs> um, check that out and uh, always stay on uh, kvmod.com for other content like that. 
Um, all right, let's jump into the news here real quick. And we would be remiss not to talk about SGDQ, which is going on all this week. And there have already been some fantastic runs. Katie, why don't you talk to us about the exciting, the, the run that the, the whole event started <gasps> off with today that you were able to watch? Uh, Brandon, oh remember talking gosh. about that in the yeah, show? Yeah. Katie was so excited to watch. Uh, what run was it, Katie? Oh, yeah. So I'm sure all of you know, one of my favorite games this year, Nier Automata, an excellent, oh my God, the gameplay is great. The story is great. Oh, and it's, surprisingly still one of the top sellers yeah. on Steam. So people love this damn game. So naturally, uh, you'd want to see what people can do with the speedrun. Now, unfortunately, I myself uh, <laughs> did not know or uh, I, it wasn't... I, let, I didn't let know get, SGDQ no, no. was... Let, let's, let's, let me, let's call it let's like give we see the background it. Let's call it like see it. You neglected to care. <laughs> mm. Okay, well, come on. Like... One, I was working. And two, I genuinely did not know that SGDQ started up this soon. Let me tell you how this went. We were literally in the pre, like we were before that we were about to go live. And Katie comes into the call and we're talking about AGDQ and we're talking about our favorite runs that we've watched so far today. And K Katie goes in and is like, oh, oh man, I forgot that started today. Did I, did I miss anything? And so I'm uh -huh. thinking, I'm like, He's, he can't be actually serious because <laughs> this, to start the actual event off, Near got a one-handed uh, speed run, and it was so sick. Like I don't, I didn't even obviously have never played through the game, and so Katie, and so Brandon, you kind of just pulled the bandaid off, and we're like, uh, yeah, well, Near Auto Automata got a, they did a run to kick it off, and Katie, you were so disappointed. Yeah, I thought I mean, you I could feel it. You were literally like, you could not have said anything that would make me feel worse, and I was like, no, I wish it was a troll, but. Yeah, Brent's not that, lying. that was the thing to kick off uh, SGDQ. So, yeah, you'll have to watch the VOD. I mean, I, I guess there always is that, but you, you kind of missed the live, you know, the live experience, obviously. Yeah, I did. Okay, sorry, not to rub it in. But luckily, um, Twitch has chat replay, so you can you can pretend true. you can pretend like you were there. It's not the same. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but you have no one but yourself to blame. Yeah. I won't so this it, is a cautionary yeah. tale. Don't be like KD. You can go and see what the schedule is. The problem is that you're you're gonna miss something good because it goes literally twenty four hours a day for seven days. So yeah. you're gonna miss something you wanna see because it's just not possible to watch all of it. But I am surprised oh, they, they really did I mean going. the the near automata run, uh, I was surprised that they kicked off with that because that's a obviously a new run for this year. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty strong way to kick it off, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is good. But um so, General Halo. rule of advice, don't be like KD. <laughs> I mean, definitely check the schedule and know when it starts so you don't miss. I mean, again, it is unfortunate that if, like you would kind of go, what are the odds that they're going to start off with that to kick it off? <laughs> I mean, so you really did get a poor luck at the draw there, even if you didn't check the schedule. But <laughs> uh, I watched the Halo run um, that they did today. Uh, Garish, I think it was, that runs uh, Halo 1 was... That was sick. Some new stuff, uh, fairly new stuff that I hadn't seen in last year's run. That run is always super cool. Um, I mean, there's just so many. I, I just definitely one of the best times of the year, I think, is what we're trying to get at. So that's why we always like to mention it. And like you said, Brian, it's just basically on just 24 7 on a tab on my computer. Yeah, I was lamenting to Scott before the show that uh, that I'm I'm kind of it's a shame that that SGDQ is the same week as July 4th because. One of my favorite things is just you know going into work each day and having having GDQ up on my monitor. It's just this serene feeling to be watching it all day. But you yeah. know, July fourth, yeah. like a lot of people are traveling. Like I'm gonna you know I'm going to weddings next weekend, so I won't be able to watch a lot of it because I'll I'll be out of pocket. Right. Um, but yeah, it's 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 just so much fun that whole the whole week. You know, you have something to do. Like there's never a dull moment. Because you're like, oh, I can just, yeah, GDQ's on. I'll turn that on. Exactly. So just a, just a PSA, if you're hearing this on Tuesday on the, uh, you know, and you're not, you know, I like to believe that there are some people that download, you know, get this podcast every week automatically. They listen to it. I'm sure they're on the internet and stuff like that, but they're not maybe as plugged in as some of our other people that are either listening, you know, to this live right now and watching live and that we can be that source of news for them, Brandon, and go, hey, you know what, maybe you don't watch a lot of Twitch. Maybe you mostly just like to watch YouTube vlogs of big chested women who like, like to play games. That's fine too, whatever whatever you prefer. Uh, no judgment here, but maybe you jump on Twitch and you watch some, even if you don't even know what speedrunning is, you just know the concept. 
like I'm not even in the speed running community in the sense of like I don't watch it usually outside of the events, but it's just I mean, dude, especially you when kinda, you see a game that you've played, you can't not be impressed and enthralled, and it's so hard to turn off. That's the other danger is that tonight I'm gonna try to go to bed. I'm gonna have it on my phone. I'm gonna be holding my phone at some weird ass angle with my headphones on. Yeah, you're gonna like you're gonna do the whole it. like you're gonna like fall asleep and your phone's gonna hit yeah. your face. It's gonna I'm gonna drop it. It's gonna hit me in the face. <laughs> I think and, the uh, the cool thing about GDQ is because I'm kind of like you, Scott. I I don't uh, I don't watch a ton of speedrun streams outside of GDQ. Right. But the cool Definitely. thing about uh, GDQ is is it's kind of a sampling of all sorts of different types of speedrunning streams because there are so many different personalities. So it like I think it's it's that's what makes it so entertaining is that right. anytime you tune in for a different run, you've got different people on the couch, different runners. And so you just get a, a little taste of a lot of different people in the speedrunning community. And some of them are, you know, are obviously great speedrunners. Some are also just super entertaining when they do yeah, their run. Exactly. So there's just, there's never a dull moment. Um, and they have their schedule posted. So you can go to gamesdonequick.com slash schedule and see all the runs that they're going to run this week and kind of plan out if there are any that you, uh, that you really want to check out. Like, um, I don't know. Do you guys have any, uh, any, we, we do this section every time GDQ comes up, but any, any runs you're looking forward to or any ones that you, that you always make sure not to miss? Um, I haven't looked at the schedule too thoroughly, but the last couple of years they've done that Super Mario Maker custom level mm. relay race, and that's always been amazing to watch. So I don't think they have a Mario Let's Maker see. this year, but yeah, I, I watched that one oh, last time. Oh, fuck me. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Uh, uh, they see. do they do have a Tetris block, which is cool. They have a like yeah. Sonic C D from Tomorrow. Yeah, that's tomorrow a Sonic C D. That's gonna be that'll be entertaining. Um Donkey um, Kong sixty four cool. is a good one. Tony Hawk Pro Skater is good. Uh yeah. I was telling I was telling Scott uh Cluster Truck. They I don't yeah. think they've done a run of that before, but the like Cluster Truck and Super Hot, I think, are interesting games to speed run, and they're doing both mm -hmm. of those this year. I always like watching Silent. I just like the Silent Hill runs are always interesting because I like that genre of of game to be speed run. It's always interesting to see how they do their skips and how they inventory manage and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what else yeah. do I like? And if you I didn't, just... if you didn't watch at AGDQ, they did Doom, <laughs> the, the new Doom mm. from 2016. Mm -hmm. But that run is so good, and they're doing another Doom run, uh, an all secrets mm -hmm. run that apparently takes under an hour and a half, which is pretty wow. wild. So I, I'm definitely gonna wow. catch that one. That one's on July 4th. That's going to be like me out with friends while I'm just sitting on my phone <laughs> just watching, watching this Doom speedrun. Uh, yeah. One that you t we talked about in the pre Titanfall 2 on Saturday. Oh, yeah, Titanfall 2. That was kind of a, a one I didn't really expect. Interesting. Yep, that'll be really interesting to see. Huh. That looks like it's going to take uh, about a little over an hour and a half or so. So yeah. anyway, yeah. that'll be interesting. Yeah, definitely not going to miss the Dark Souls 3 one run after that. Say, that one's got your name a, on it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and then uh, I also see the... Uh, it's, it, they, it says Super Mario Series Warpless Relay Race. It's mm. almost a three-hour long run. And hmm. if they're if they're saying it's of the Mario Series, then I'm pretty... Yeah, I don't know what that means. That sounds cool, though. Yeah. Three hours. Yeah. Should be interesting. I'll definitely have to... Tune in for that one. I'm excited. And just and just to watch and realize, like when you see, like a like obviously most of the time these runs, they're, they're really prepared for the marathon runs because they don't want to. You know, sometimes you get you know the, the the nerves and stuff like that. But generally, it's usually pretty well put together, and people are pretty kind. But to think about, like, God, man, like when I was watching the Halo run, like how many hours this dude and and probably years right to perfect to perfect that Halo 1 run to get it under. I mean, he did it in a, a 124.51 or something like that. And he also has the world record as well. It's like 116 or something yeah. like that. And the amount of just like, because I, I think one thing I was saying to you about, about the runs that I really like when it comes to Halo and stuff is that beyond the, obviously the tricks, the technical stuff that they're doing, um, the fact that they're always discovering, like they discovered, like you had said, there was a new uh, kind of skip that they figured out um within the last year that kind of changed the way they did the run with the banshee where they get the banshee to target them as mm -hmm. opposed to, and then they take that and go a different route and then you have all the gun actual skill as well right because they're playing he's playing on the hardest difficulty and so that's just impressive like the pre-aim places and anyway i just i like i like speed runs that a lot of times especially with shooters that have a mix of like gun skill and then all the other stuff that speed runs are known for like the skips and the glitches 
and the uh, and the other tricks. So anyway, cannot recommend it enough. If you have not checked out any of the AGDQs or anything before, do it. You have no excuse. You will be entertained. If you're not entertained, you can personally come to me and tell me you weren't entertained. And I will just tell you straight up you're a fucking liar and I'll slap you in the dick and tell you to get out of my face. But Oof. that's my personal guarantee. Or vagina, as it may be. <laughs> if you're spending you your entertainment time watching or listening to this podcast, I guarantee you it's at least as entertaining as this is. Exactly. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> that's a great way to yeah. put it. Not, not to not to put us down, but I'm just saying, no, you no. know, that's it. It is yeah, it is at least on fair. par with our level of entertainment. I think. I mean, you know, maybe even exceeding if you could even believe that. Yeah, but I mean, it's only on for one week. You know, that's it's like right. that's. You only get it for one week because it's just not possible to put on that kind of entertainment in a 24-7 fashion the entire year. If they could, that would be mm -hmm. ludicrous. Exactly. So um, we are going to move on from that. But yeah, check out SGDQ. Um, now we're going to get into a section of old man rants at Twitch here because, uh, <laughs> as you know, Twitch launched the uh, subscription uh, program for affiliates, which we... We did hear of uh, some big news coming down the pipeline. Uh, last mm -hmm. week, there was a little bit of hint at this, that there was going to be some exciting news for affiliates, and that has finally launched. And um, yeah, I'm really mad because the affiliates, uh, I have to say, Brandon, since the affiliates have gotten their subscriptions, I've just been losing out on massive mm -hmm. amounts of revenue. Um, people are just coming in and saying, hey, this is an affiliate stream. I'm leaving. I mean, I've even seen that comment. Mm. Uh, partners are old news. What else did I see? Um, mm. wow. You know, all kinds of stuff that really makes me fear for the future of, uh, of Twitch. I'm, I'm yeah, kidding, could, of course. Couldn't be worse timing. I mean, you've got a baby on the way, and we just pulled exactly. the rug out from under you. <laughs> all these affiliates come in. It's like Twitch <laughs> announces this, and it's like, how am I going to feed my, my, my family, my baby? It's like, I don't know what's going to happen. But um, of course, I'm being uh, facetious. I'm actually very excited. I know a lot of people that are actually um, affiliates in this community and in my own community and that are part of other streams that I watch. And so I think it's good. Uh, I just I had to pretend. To, that's actually my new thing is to pretend to actually be mad at that. So when people come into my stream, I actually hope they think I'm serious because <laughs> I spend a lot of time like ranting and raving at the people. I feel, that like, I feel like a, a pretty significant part of your brand over time has just become manufactured outrage. That's actually very true. No, you, you totally, you called me on that one. That's, that's, that's 90%, not 90%, maybe 50% of my brand. Um, but yeah, no, that's exciting. And uh, I think it's always a good thing when more people are able to make money doing what they enjoy. And this is a good, um, you know, it's not the same as partnerships, but it's a nice step for a lot of people that want to be able to make some money doing this. I mean, what if, you know, I mean, I know you've seen ranges of feedback to this, I'm sure. But I think overall, it's probably pretty positive. Um, I mean, what have you seen so far? I mean, I'm sure you're excited that this is finally out, Brandon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Partner. it's uh, it's it's been really neat to see so many, you know, so many people sort of double down on uh, on their passion for streaming because they're able to make money from it now. And yeah. uh, just, I mean, like you were saying, a lot of uh, I feel like people people in communities who uh, like your community, for instance, you know, a lot of your sure. viewers are also streamers. And yep. just just kind of being able to uh, give all those people a, a, a way to, you know, a way to monetize and start building a community of their own yep. is is just a honestly, it's something that we probably should have done a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of like there are some people that you know had some skepticism or straight up anger. Not really anybody that is in my close circle. I mean, I kind of, I'll just comment on this myself. Like, I did see some Twitter threads and some people being like, you know, like, well, back in my day, you had to apply for partnership or whatever else. And it's like, now these people are going to come in and they're going to think that they're like, like, if, if anybody, I haven't really seen much of that. I've more seen, uh, like, people were scared. Like, I, there was some comment by one streamer who was like, I don't want people coming in with their affiliate badges which don't really i mean they exist but it's, it's not a challenge <laughs> badge but like there was just all this like man it's just like and thinking that they're hot shit i'm like we're kind of like if if you're a partner already and you're treating people differently because you're a partner and like their shit then you're probably you're missing the point of this whole thing anyway so i haven't really seen anybody that i'm close to behaving in that manner but i know that there was definitely some people that were kind of like a little bit bitter about it but i'm just like dude like if you're worried about money being taken out of your mouth from an affiliate who now can make revenue and people are leaving your stream to go to theirs, then uh, 
maybe you should take a look at the content that you're making or your stream or whatever you're doing yeah. and change it up. It's always competitive. Just because they can make money off it doesn't make it any less competitive. Yeah, it's, it's getting I, rid I don't even some, understand that strain of logic. It's getting rid it's of some just... artificial barriers that that were there before, and I think it's uh, you know exactly. It, it, For sure. I think it uh, it makes a smoother grade between someone wanting to start out streaming and someone wanting yeah. to make streaming a career like that. True. Before I think that was a that was a very you know it was like if you got if you got partnership well now maybe you have a chance but getting there right. is pretty challenging and uh, I think yeah. this makes that transition a lot easier and allows people to to sort of dip their toe in give it a try. And maybe see if you know see if they can build up some support over time and turn it into something sustainable. So it's uh, it's been Definitely. neat to see, and uh, you know the good thing too is is uh, the thing that I think a lot of people overlook. Putting putting my my Twitch hat on very briefly, mm -hmm. uh, the thing that a lot of people overlook is that uh, the more people that are you know maybe if someone's first paying subscription is to an affiliate. That means right. they're that much more likely to subscribe to someone else, and maybe they wouldn't have subscribed at all in the past. So hopefully, right. it's uh, it's growing the pie for everyone, and it's not uh, you know it's not taking Scott's subs. Well, it's probably taking Scott's subs, but that's specific well, to his I'll quality do. being low or his content being low of quality. Course. Well, no, basically mm. what happens is I launch these careers of these other people, and then they just steal my viewers, and that's you true. know I mean, that's but that's true. but that's fine. Hey, listen, I'm happy to be. <laughs> to provide that to uh to my community so it's perfectly fine but yeah oh and i actually this this question brandon can you give me a date of when the subscription gifting is launching because i'm very anxious about the, that i don't you have a date. a date i don't have a date okay. but it is uh it is in progress so that's okay. uh pretty cool things in the pipeline very non-committal answer in the frequently asked questions that says we're working hard to deliver this feature as soon as we can so as Very it turns out, that is the case. That I can confirm that statement is true. <laughs> <That's> very, so <laughs> that is some serious PR speak right there, Brandon. Well done. Uh, we're working on it, and as soon as we can. But no, uh, no date. Fair enough. I, I know you are. I know you are. Okay. Cool. So anyway, yeah, excited uh, for the people that have become uh, become affiliates. Congrats to you guys. And like you said, I do think overall it is uh, helping more people get a piece of the pie. Some people are just. Um, you know, fatter and require more pieces of the pie. So what can you do? There'll be a lot, a lot <laughs> uh, more emotes on the site. <laughs> that's true too. Holy crap. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, is dizzying at this point. Yeah. And also actually some nice changes for partners when it comes to emotes. If your account is in good standing. Yeah. You just you like almost overlooked that. I totally forgot about that. But yeah, that, that's some good stuff for partners too. Even if they weren't included in, you know, because the affiliate stuff was a little bit different. Partners are still getting love. Like that's a, that's a big deal. Of course, my account is not good in good standing. I mean, like no, Brandon, never Brandon has been and never will be. <laughs> exactly. So I don't. <laughs> get that, but that's a pretty cool. That's a pretty cool feature. Um. All right. Let's move on from that and go right into some PUBG talk. We talked about it uh, previously, so we don't have to spend a lot of time on this. But the but the new patch added a lot of uh, kind of quality of life features beyond uh, just performance increases, which. Have you guys noticed a, a pretty solid performance increase? I have for sure myself. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah. and paired with some of the other changes too, it it's just it the game just looks nicer. So like they added uh, the two two new uh, settings. They have dusk and then they have like bright. I don't know what they, what it's called, but like bright sunny weather. Mm -hmm. And both of those, I mean, the dusk especially is just it's just yeah. beautiful. Like it's a really very uh, captivating setting and um and so that can that and also the performance getting a little bit better is like the game just it is running more smoothly and i am i'm looking forward to when it runs smoothly enough that i can jack up all the settings back up to mm. maximum because yeah. you know right now most people are just playing on low to get the the most frames they can um but yeah the game looks nice uh they had they had a few a few pretty important changes to this patch i think the one of the biggest ones uh, that I've noticed is the circles are a lot more random than they used to be mm -hmm. when it comes to getting smaller and smaller. Before, you had a reasonable, you know, reasonable guess that the circle would be inside the center, kind of toward the center of the next circle. That's no longer the case. So now uh, the, the new circles could be on one edge of the next circle. And it makes it a lot, it's actually a lot more challenging yeah. Um, and it makes cars a bigger part of the the current meta because sometimes you may just not have enough time to get 
into the next circle without a vehicle. So that's been interesting. I feel like vehicles uh, have a way bigger part of the game than they did before. Um, so that's been kind of kind of exciting. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, that stuff's been everything you said. I've enjoyed, and even little things like you can now uh, loot while moving. So, like if uh, if you run over an item and you hit F, you'll slow down a little bit, and your guy will do an animation where he grab like leans down and grabs it. Um, I think most people at this point yeah. that have played the game a lot, obviously do like tab looting and stuff. But still, like I was watching some other, I was like, well, I ever really use that. And then I was watching some streamers that are much better at the game than I am. And they were definitely using that for like individual mm-hmm. items, obviously to stay on the move. Right. And, and to kind of like keep momentum going, especially if they're in an area that is like, you know, a lot of people. So uh, this, the, the patch notes are, there's a lot of stuff that they, that they do. Oh, yeah. And that's, Another, that's one. Yeah, go ahead. Another good change I noticed was uh, you can actually, if you you can open a door while you're reloading and it'll cancel the reload. Which, yeah. Uh, yes, that was again. So that's like little quality again, of life things. Like, it goes a long that's way. The stuff. It oh, was yeah. so nice. It's so nice. Yeah, <laughs> th- that was one that was that I noticed because I asked about it. I hadn't actually looked at the patch notes, and I was like, did they fix the shit where, like, can I actually open a door and have it cancel my reload without like without just standing there spamming enough waiting, you know, for seven yeah, bullets exactly. to go into my revolver and. Yeah, that um, changed like when you down somebody, you, if somebody else kills them, you get the credit for the kill. Like, again, not a massive deal, but just a nice quality of life improvement. So you're not tunnel visioning being like, Katie, don't you fucking steal that kill. I downed him. And Katie's like, nope, he's mine now. <laughs> he's mine um, every single I got time. Him. I got him. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm just looking over this. There's just so many things. And so that was kind of what we were talking about. And I, and I will mention the elephant in the room, H1Z1, which is, again, it's not, it's not a dead game by any means at this point but as far as momentum goes you know that's a game that had no competitors for a very long time in the space and h1z1 i mean at this point today i think we were talking about brandon they've they've they peaked over three hundred thousand. yeah the player player on those battlegrounds was over three hundred thousand and has like (laughs) a a new a new peak i mean it's just wild that's a that's pretty unheard of for just about any third party game you know that's not from a triple a studio and like an early access game, I mean, it's 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 basically unheard of. Like three hundred thousand yeah, concurrent yeah. players is just wild. It's insane, and it's only going to continue to uh, to grow. And and so we talked about this a little bit, where I'm kind of like waiting for something bad to happen because these patches are coming out. They're improving their performance. They're not. We talked about it earlier, but they're not focusing on the cosmetic stuff. They're just improving the game. And again, it's I guess the situation where they've said from the beginning in all of their patch notes that every patch beyond the stuff, like obviously they're going to make the gameplay changes, but it's about optimizing performance. And they really, I mean, they have been doing that in every single patch and they're sticking to their guns on that. No pun intended. And like when, you, when you can, when you can like, be the top seller during a steam sale and it's not on sale, yeah, that, that is, we you want to talk about unheard of. Like that just doesn't happen. That's a good happen. point. That's a good point. That's fucking crazy when you say it like that. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, the Steam sales happening. It's still number one. It's not on sale. <laughs> think, think about if they would have like discounted at ten percent or something. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, imagine. yeah. So definitely, just just really cool to see. And like you said, I mean, we're, we've all played it this week. I can't really get enough of it. It's it's yeah. Just it's continuing the, the honeymoon improve. phase is not ending. Like it's just I still I'm I'm. I read through the patch notes fully, every patch, yep. because it's yep. just exciting. There's a ton of changes, and everything has been in a positive direction so far. Like everything is is the game is is feeling more fluid, and a little even just the little changes, like you're talking about the canceling the reload to open a door. Yep, all of that makes the gameplay feel more fluid, and that was one of the the biggest things when the game first came out. Is you could see the potential. It was a lot of fun, but there were still a lot of rough edges. In terms of the gameplay itself, and every sure. time they fix one, you know, one of those little those little issues that that makes you kind of get taken out of the taken out of the immersion of the game, like mm-hmm. it's just it's it really is becoming a better product. So I hope that they that they keep delivering, you know, because I think I, I was kind of skeptical when they said that they wanted to spend like maybe six months in early access, yeah. but at the pace they're going, I mean, I can see it. Like there, this is Same. only month three. Um, and so three more months of patches like this, you know, that it seems like it'll be probably a fully fledged game at that point. 
I agree. No, I agree. I was a little bit skeptical too. Like, are they going to be able to get it up to par uh, in time? And like, I'm just thinking about the stuff they showed at E3 that hasn't even happened. Like there's already been so many good quality of life updates and there's going to be so many more patches before we get to the finished product. But like, we haven't even gotten to the end, the vaulting animation system that they're adding. Like there's going to be so many, like this game is going to look so different. I mean, the one thing that we pretty much knew from the beginning uh, of this game was when you played it and you had a, a fun like a good match and you got a win it had the crack formula that it needed it had the gunplay like it was raw right there was performance issues there was still a lot of stuff that needed to be fixed but it ha- it like it had the it factor that you needed for a game like this to succeed to have them have the it factor and then continue to just improve on that and keep like you said us in the honeymoon phase are excited and to be selling like you said having three hundred thousand. uh players in a session today to be the top selling game on steam during the steam sale and not be on sale like you said this is kind of a lot of i guess a lot of first for a game of this of this type right that yeah whatever you want it's to call kind of uncharted genre. territory i mean it's like, there are not very many success stories like this where you no. just look at it and it's like what is the ceiling for this game right because exactly. i don't it, it's yeah. clearly it hasn't been hit yet like the game's not even officially no. out like when when they when they get rid of the early access uh label like what is the right. ceiling for this game where does where does the player base start to actually slow down i mean 300,000 most games couldn't imagine that kind of concurrent player base i'm just wondering yeah. if, if we'll see it if we'll see it start to take on you know the big dogs um right the you know your overwatches your counter strikes like at this yeah. point it's it seems crazy to even talk like that but it's it's not may not be that crazy for that much longer no, absolutely. Totally agreed. Um, and so that's going to actually, speaking of, and the thing that's going to help with that yeah. uh, are um, s- we got some news that uh, the PUBG studio wants to add cross-platform uh, play between PC and Xbox One, and that that's something that uh, they think is probably pretty straightforward technically, but there's definitely challenges and stuff they got to figure out. And obviously we know, we've known since E3, I think before that, but, but that they, they, this game is going to be coming to PS4. And uh, and Xbox as well, so that's obviously going to open up a whole nother. I mean, and there's no reason. Sure, we know that the superior platform to play the game on is PC, of course, <laughs> but that's not going to stop the fact that there's millions and millions and millions of people that are going to play this on console and are going to play this. Like, so I was just thinking about that too. Like, let's add just the fact that there's mm-hmm. how many copies they've sold on PC. Think about when it hits console and it's yeah. a more yeah. polished product. How many millions of people? I mean, this game's going to have. I mean, you know what? I was actually going to kind of compare it to which it's kind of crazy to think about because now rocket league is this insane success story but this Mm -hmm. is reminding me of the trajectory of rocket league not the same story but it's similar in the sense of like it's just a really really good product and the formula works and they continue to update the game in a way that they listen to the community and that people really are excited about so you could say like if if it's going it's a totally different genre but it could take that same trajectory i mean i forget the, the the player stats for Rocket League, but it's fucking insane. Oh yeah, I think the, this basically is like the this is the next Rocket League in terms of the, the smash hit coming out of nowhere. Um, and Definitely. and I think the so they want to add crossplay. I think one of the things that's been really positive for Rocket League is that yep. the control scheme doesn't matter. You know, between exactly. keyboard and mouse, they can do crossplay without having to worry about the the experience on the PC being different from that on the console. And that that just helps your player base stay thriving. Like you don't end up with the Call of Duty problem where the PC version is dead and the console version is still fine. But you know, like you basically have some customers that end up not being able to have a good experience because that player base dies on the one platform. So I could understand like why uh, PUBG would want to add crossplay, but I also just don't fundamentally I don't know how they do it because it's right. a shooter. And exactly. we all know that keyboard and mouse versus controller when it comes to shooters, there's just, you cannot balance it. You just can't. Because you can't give no. controllers aim assist against mouse players that don't have it. Exactly. But without aim assist, controllers no are going to be garbage for <laughs> aiming. So yeah. it's, uh, I, you know, when they say, when they say that like, that, they basically call that out as that's the thing they have to figure out. But like, I don't know how you figure that out. But yeah, I do I understand know. the incentive to want to unify your player base so that you don't sure. have to worry about fragmenting those player numbers. Yeah. Cuz like you're saying Scott, I think the console audience is going to be big for this game. And yep. if you can if you can throw the console players and the PC players all in the same matchmaking pool, 
then that's like yeah. you know that's faster queues for everyone they probably yeah. get you know they there's just a lot of a lot of advantages that comes with and they probably don't have to uh, split development as much on like you know does this feature make sense for console but how do we do it for pc you know they might have to kind of split their brains up to do two different versions if they could find a way to not have to do that and basically balance the, the game across console and pc the same way that seems like a win for everyone um i'm just not sure how they do that like because we haven't really seen anyone do that before no they in the article they do reference um gears of war 4 which has uh it's limited to social quick play is what they call it mm. while core and competitive play remain segregated to keep them as you know so there is so it's kind of like i guess a more casual version and i don't know if that's what you would want to do exactly but yeah like you can't get around and they say that in the article i mean you can't get around the aim assist you're not console players are going to have no even with aim assist i don't think obviously that would that would help you have to have that if they're going to even be remotely competitive but then you're going to have on the pc side people being like well okay i don't know who killed me not that you wouldn't know obviously who you're playing against so yeah. it's not really that big of a deal but eventually they're going to have um they're going to have stuff like you know the replay system that's we also didn't talk about talk about things that are exciting there's going to be a full robust replay system that shows you the way that you died uh Ooh. like anyway there's a lot of stuff that's coming down the line for this game anyway i'm getting excited just thinking about it but um yeah how do you get around the whole making console players on a, on a more even player base with pc yeah like well like said, i mean just I think about think about if you have a console player running into grims right like it's <laughs> you, you know you're that's not going to be a good experience that's not good for the developer because anytime a good you know a, a a new or even a good console player runs into a good pc player PC, sure. they're going to get dominated and you yep. don't you don't want that to happen right because then that's people are going to They'll return the game or they'll go to Reddit and they'll cry about it. You know, like there's just a lot of <laughs> bad, um, bad scenarios that can play out when that happens. Yeah. So but maybe they could do something like that where like if you called it out explicitly or maybe, you know, they have the checkbox for auto matching right. in squads. If you could check maybe. a box that said like you want to do cross play because you want faster queue times or something like right. maybe something like that could work where. Maybe they, they can't quite balance it, but they give you the option to say, I either do or don't want to match cross-play. That could potentially work. Now, and one thing I actually was thinking about is that there are certain games, this game is not a, uh, you can have twitchy moments in this game for sure, but this game is not a twitch shooter in the, in the FPS sense, right? That's true. It really isn't. Like, so I could see, I don't know if aim assist is actually, neat for, I would say for, if you're, if you're a decent console player and you've played other shooters, I think you could at least be, possibly competitive with people on PC that aren't quite as good. And if, like you said, if, if there actually was an option to tick and it wasn't required, that, like you said, that makes a lot more sense because then you're opting in and it's like, well, you might get matched against some PC players and your queue time will be shorter. But this game, I guess if it was going to work with any game, this game is not a Twitch shooter. So you might be, could get away with just like, once you know the game really well, crosshair placement, that kind of stuff. That's true. Um, That's so true. Maybe. I mean, compared to something like a Counter-Strike, it's right. obviously not going to be quite as bad as that would be, because um, yeah. a lot of the a lot of the shots are at longer range, and you're leading people with kind of predictable, uh, you know, predictable leading patterns and stuff. So, right. you know, maybe a good console player could could do okay. Um, yeah. But I'll just it'll be interesting to see how they try and tackle that because I think there are a few different ways they could go about it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it sounds like that. It sounds like that's what they want to do, and. We were just talking about their player base. Like when they add consoles into the mix, you're talking about probably millions of well, concurrent players at a time. I think so. I definitely agree with that. Um, you know, they'll definitely if they do con, they'll definitely need the Counter Strike 180 button. Honestly, <laughs> in this game, <laughs> you know, just woof, turn around. That was that was one of the best things that Counter Strike ever did for their uh, console controller. Yeah, that was really good. Turn, you know, you need it because you're not going to turn fast enough with that thumbstick. I'll tell you that much. Um, <laughs> exactly. All right, let's jump into some quick hits here. Um, StarCraft Remastered is going to be releasing on August 14th, and it's going to be for the very reasonable price tag of 15 bucks. Yeah. Which is not, Actually, uh, not too bad. I'm pretty excited for this. I'm an yeah. uncultured youth and, you know, mm. have not had the pleasure of playing StarCraft, so... Yeah, See, you're so going to be picking this up. Really. Yeah. Sure, you, get to, you get to experience the, the old school game, but you don't have to actually play it with those disgusting <laughs> graphics from before you were born. Oh right. yeah, it's filthy. Graphics. Now it's actually 
I can actually stand to look at it now. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, 15 bucks, I think, is a very reasonable price for that. I'm actually surprised that, I'm surprised it's not more. I think they could get away with 20 or 30 and people would probably still buy it. But $15, mm. I think, kind of ensures that, like, everyone buys it. Mm. And I think that's, yeah. like, that's a good thing. I think they, I think they're optimizing for selling more copies of this to people that probably already own StarCraft and StarCraft 2. But for 15 bucks... Like why not? You know that's the that's the price of like indie games on Steam. Yeah, that's a pretty good price. Yeah, and it comes with Brood War, so I mean you get you get to experience uh, the the game and the expansion. So I'm excited for it. I mean, you know, I haven't played StarCraft in a long time, um, so I I think I'll probably pick it up and at least like hop into the campaign again. Just kind of remember remember what that old campaign was like. It's been quite a while. Yeah. So definitely some some excitement. Katie Zen, are you going to do a review or a video review on your channel or KB Mind? Of, um, of we'll game? see. Yeah, like a retro. I'd like it. Yeah, like you could play it, and then you know, obviously, you know, it's a remaster and it's been out for forever. But you know, it's your first experience with it, so that could be, or maybe my yeah. first. You know what? Maybe a my first time series, Katie. I like that. Actually, you could take a sexy oh, like cool. thumbnail of. Of you like in lingerie or something, and then <laughs> you know, with holding whatever you know, like a, a faux, like old, like case that you know, believe it or not, PC games came in boxes back in the day with the with the manual. And that's right, yeah. I mean, I know it's a people don't believe that, but they did. I like before, this idea right? for yeah. a series, just have uh, yeah, my first time, have, see, a young, uh, yeah. have a young nubile gamer take a yeah. shot at, at old, you know, old school games, old stuff, yeah, and see their yeah. opinion. That's a good perspective to have on something. That'd be pretty interesting. Yeah, that would be. I would actually really be interested to see that. So anyway, that one's free, Katie. The next idea is going to cost you, but that one's free. Boom. All right. Uh, so <laughs> next it'll be me propelling the KB Mod podcast into. Oh, that guy from uh, Virgin Gamer. He's the. Uh, That's right. Really You're right. KB oh, the Virgin Gamer. The Virgin Gamer. No, th there's got to be a better title than that. That's a little too. Uh, I feel like the Virgin Gamer has to have. There, there's a channel that exists for sure <laughs> called the Virgin Gamer. Yeah. I kind of uh, like that my first time tag. It's uh, you yeah. know, it's just scintillating enough that it mm -hmm. makes you yeah. click, but then you right. notice that it's it's really just you know it's good good pure gaming fun. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll definitely uh definitely consider that. Thank you, gentlemen, for the idea, and uh, thank you for the profit. I'll definitely make off of this video series. <laughs> and, uh... It's all good, dude. The affiliates are already fucking me over, so you know what? Take this idea and run with it as well. I'm not. Yeah, I don't have the right. age, so I couldn't even. I'm not young, so I couldn't even do this if I wanted to. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's move on to... Um, I was going to say move on to another dumpster fire, but like StarCraft Remastered, by all accounts, will not be a dumpster fire, so I don't know why I'm saying that. Uh, but no, so Sega Forever... You could have gone... You could have done something like from, you know, from a, from a classic, classic legacy... Mm -hmm. The classic dumpster fire. <laughs> there we go. That would actually. I don't. Good. I don't know if the actual thing here is a dumpster fire, but it sounds like the launch was pretty pretty rough. Um, pretty Sega, rough. Right Sega. Now. Sega. Sega oh, just man. up and like announced uh, a bunch of classic game, like a bunch of classic Sega games that they were releasing as phone apps. Just let just okay. let that sink in. Yeah. Let it. Yeah. Let that rest for a second. They're all free, right? Like what I'm looking at is just free yeah. Sega games. Yeah, they're free. Okay. And uh, so I, I, I went and like looked at the App Store and I was like, "Yep, that those games are there." But then I thought, "Wait a minute, why would I would not want to play these games on my phone screen?" Mm -hmm. Like you need right. a controller for a lot of these old games. Um, and apparently the mm -hmm. the emulation uh, has been kind of rough. On these games too, so it doesn't sound like this is the best way to play these games. Um, but some of the some of the titles they launched with um, did kind of hit me in in the the nostalgia feels uh, because like they have Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Comic Ugh. Zone, Kid Chameleon. Like these are games I remember playing because I was I was a Sega kid, and oh, I, yeah. I love those games. Um, they also yeah. launched with Altered Beast and Fantasy Star Two. So like there's some there's some good stuff in there. Those um, are some bangers. Yeah. I'm just I'm not sure that I'm not sure that on the phone is where I want to play those, uh, let alone with what it sounds like is kind of uh some spotty spotty emulation. 
So yeah. hopefully they get that stuff solved. But I mean, I mean, it's a it's a cool idea, like especially giving these games away for free. Like you know, talking about KD with being able to play games that uh, that were out before you were born. Like this right. is this is a good chance to be able to get to play oh, some of those games. Oh, how dare you! I grew up with the Genesis. <laughs> I, mean, I know, but that doesn't that doesn't change the fact that the game came out before you were born. Before, that, is, yeah. that is a fact. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's not like I'm having a brand new perspective on. Well, know, maybe you aren't, but you're you're an eminently cultured youth gamer. Right. Not everyone, not not everyone your age mm. would be. So you got to put Some it on do, their platform I'm a man of, of the choice. People. You got to put it on their platform of choice. Everyone's carrying around their iPhones and their Androids. That's true. And yeah. so you put it on the App Store for free, and. Uh, I think it's it's uh, it's an interesting thing in principle, um, but I'm just not sure that that the, yeah. the phone is where I want to play those games. Unfortunately, that's true. Hey, uh, let me tell you, uh, later years of high school, the, uh, the those Sonic games that they released on like mobile, like those are actually pretty good. Like uh, they had they completely redid Sonic One, Two, and Sonic CD for like mobile devices, and those games actually work pretty well. Like I, I enjoyed those quite a bit, just playing them on like you know. You know, whenever I had a chance. So, yeah. like, I, I could see, you know, if it was free and they emulated well, it could be, you know, it was harmless. But, unfortunately, uh, it's being emulated through Unity, is what I'm saying. Yeah. It seems like an odd way to emulate a title. Yeah, they, they defend their use of Unity, because uh, a lot of people are saying, why didn't you go with something else? And, I don't know, they're basically saying that they could have, so... The retro arc devs said that they could have been using retro arc right now if they hadn't been so stubbornly insistent on demanding we relicense our entire program to something that would strip us all of our rights on top of some other unreasonable things like not showing any branding, etc. Hell, they could have had this running on the desktop right now on, t- on the top of consoles and maybe some net play as well. Oh, well, so retro arc sounding a little bit uh, bitter about the fact that they didn't go with them for mm. emulation, but um, yeah, it sounds like it sounds like Sega trying to curb the fact that a lot of their games you know are only playable with emulators at this point right um and so you might as well release a version your own that you control that exactly. you know you can launch it with launch it free and have ads on it or something and make some money off yep. it in, in perpetuity um but it is i mean it is kind of a shame that apparently some of these these games suffer from uh these emulation problems but i i think it's a it's a neat idea in principle um Especially with, we didn't talk about this, um, or maybe was it this week that it? I don't remember when it got announced, but the that's that Nintendo's doing the the Super NES Classic, uh, which I think we we predicted that being a possibility after they abruptly cut off mm-hmm. the supply of the NES Classic. Um, yep. But I could see, you know, I, I I could see Sega doing something like that too. But it sounds like this is their strategy instead. Like instead of doing a console type thing, they're just releasing them as phone ports, which is okay. But I actually think maybe I would rather have a little console that plays. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I, it's true. You know, there actually there are me. systems that have like I've definitely seen. Oh, Sega Genesis eighty bundled in games, but right. it's all done by you know off brand companies, and it's all. Right. Yeah. Like no, it's not through HDMI. You can't do like save states or anything like that. So I mean, that's what I'm like. Do you think? Obviously, they wouldn't sell, like uh, going up against a Nintendo version. Similar, they probably wouldn't sell as many. But lots of people have very mm-hmm. fond of Sega. Like uh, growing up, I play, I had a Sega Genesis, and I think they could sell like, a tons lot of, of these Sega actually. Games. I think because, they would sell a good because amount especially with that. Nintendo and like having uh, having supply problems. Like if you're yeah. if you think about uh, you know a parent looking to buy something for Christmas or whatever, like people looking for gifts if you know if if you're the person you're looking for was like a just an old school game fan and you couldn't get the nintendo version you'd probably pick up a sega version instead like these are these are some good games yeah Yeah, absolutely these are actually legitimate titles they're not yeah they're not some garbage so yeah i would i totally with you i would welcome them to actually to do that i think they would actually make a lot of money could probably sell a lot of them yeah and let me just say you know Oh, go ahead. No, I said maybe they'll do that down the road if this, if this, I mean, it's not like this is the direction they're going, so they're probably not going to, but who knows? You're right. Yeah. I kind of hope they do it in addition. I mean, the, the, there's yeah. no, there's not any downside from the consumer perspective of being able to, 
either download them for free on your mm. phone or pay, you know, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 bucks for a little console that has the has this on it and comes with a controller. Um, because it's like if you obviously the best way to play it would be on on a controller and being able to plug it into your TV and stuff. So right. it's mm-hmm. like if people if people didn't want that, get being able to get it for free on your phone is a cool is a cool way to make sure that these games legacies live on. But I also do think they would sell a, a decent amount of the hardware just because people don't want to mess with you know having to download a bunch of stuff on their phone. Like yeah. Nintendo has paved the way here. They've they've shown that people are willing to buy uh you know a console that has a bunch of just old games on it to to get around the difficulty in emulation like a lot of people just don't want to mess with emulation so i think they'd sell uh, a lot uh, mm-hmm. it can't do in chats talking about we had a story about how um in the brazilian market they make new gen like they, someone bought the schematics oh, yeah, yeah. for the yeah. genesis a company did so it's not even sega right uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. They bought the, and and they make uh, Genesis just also because of like, you know, hardware and stuff is not uh, at the same level in a lot of places in Brazil, right? As like North America and some other spots, so that a lot of people still play that console. Um, so that's interesting, but yeah, it's it's different than like obviously doing something like like if they, if they just sold the Genesis as is as it was made back. The year that it came out, you know, I don't think that would really move the needle much. Obviously, in the U.S., <laughs> no, not really. It, it would have to be a, a something like the NES Classic or whatever else. Yeah, but, but I mean, Sega. Yeah, I think I think Sega has enough enough good games to make a version of an NES Classic type system. Sure. Oh, like this, they don't. I don't think they have enough to put out multiple editions. Maybe, but I right. definitely think they could put out one that would be reasonably successful because a lot yep. of those early Sega games, like, there's some good stuff in there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. Yeah, definitely. And uh, this got me thinking. This is pretty off topic, but just uh, like nostalgia for that. Like a lot of people grew up playing the Sonic games. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Sonic Generations is on sale on Steam right now. Mm-hmm. And this is so off topic, but it's only $4.99. Mm-hmm. And that game is incredible. Okay. That's it. I mean, if, you, if you're fond of Sonic, if you played so it's like a love letter to like the Genesis games and like pretty much all those games. Uh, you know, honestly, I was just scrolling through Steam when you were talking about this, and this came up. So, like, I just wanted to throw that out there. I feel like, okay, little, yeah, little, little encouragement little, to buy it. Yeah, a little shill, you know. It's all good. All right, let's move on from Sega having some issues with their emulation to what's better than emulation, the real thing. And yeah. speaking of the real thing, how about the original thing? The original Doom 2 floppy disks have sold for over $3,000. John Romero's, by the way, fl- Doom 2 floppy disks have sold for $3,000 to some uh, enthusiast. I will use the word enthusiast. Somebody that really <laughs> uh, likes to That's polite. collect nostalgic uh, things. And I say I'm a little bit skeptical because in the article it says that these Doom 2 floppy disks were once owned that's been confirmed that they were once owned by John Romero. In parentheses, it says and potentially signed. So <laughs> we don't even know if either these they're are signed, signed or they're not. Right, potentially floppy signed. Floppy disks. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I don't know. It sounds like um, he's just trying to make Kyle, uh, who wrote the article for Ars Technica, is trying to make this sound a little bit maybe better because he doesn't know. Um, so anyway, uh, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Three thousand dollars for a little bit, you know, somewhat of a piece of history of a famous, you know. Yeah, game it, it makes me wonder what some of the old physical media will be worth, because like these these discs, I don't think, from what I understand, there's not even anything really special about them. Just that they no. were obviously they're they're back from back in the day. And, and they were owned probably, by John Romero. That's yeah, it. They were owned by him, but you know, he was John Romero. I'm guessing he probably has more than one copy of Doom on floppy disks. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, not like they were even like the original ones or something like that. They're just they're ones that he owned. But uh, they mention in the in the Ars Technic article that there's like a rarer version of a Doom disc is actually uh, five and a quarter inch discs with Doom, which uh, will 
a lot of people probably don't aren't even like old enough to know what those are because those were on their way out when I was young. But five and a quarter inch uh, discs were like what what preceded floppy disks, and apparently there are some uh, some copies of Doom on those which go yes. for like nine hundred or thousand dollars something like that. Yeah. Per- um, so it makes me wonder what some of the physical media will be worth if people keep it around. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because like basically that's. I feel like for all intents and purposes, physical media is kind of kind of done. Like any physical media you buy today, do you really think that's going to be worth anything, you know, years down the line? Well, it's a pretty, it's pretty huge. Like to just, it's a pretty big generalization to just say all physical gaming media, you know? Like yeah, but I'm just long. saying, I guess what I mean is like, Don Romero's floppy disks only exist because he, you know, things were put on physical media at that time. Like right. all the mm-hmm. games being developed now, there are no original floppy disks or anything like that because it's just all digital. Yeah. So there's no, right. there's no memento. There's no, there's no like physical record of a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Hold on, hold on. Now, now hear me out here. You're right. No physical record, but how about like we could get real meta here and have like the original build of world of warcraft that was saved onto a uh you know like a hard drive <laughs> somebody's like yeah. usb uh external hard drive like one of like i don't know who like or overwatch or something like that and so you're right it's not like it wouldn't be it was sure it would be on somebody's rig or obviously on their server somewhere but like and then a video of jeff kaplan dragging the original overwatch build from <laughs> Like let's say his computer slash server onto <laughs> the external <laughs> USB hard drive, and Ooh. then that comes with it. I'm telling you, you, like I'm just spitballing, but this is like you, you said, it doesn't. The physical media wouldn't exist. Yeah, you're right. That's yeah. the closest thing, and people would lose their shit. I mean, you tell me somebody would spend ten or twenty thousand dollars, some Overwatch dude. Oh yeah, totally. To to Go have that little piece of history, like, and even obviously probably be more the video of Jeff Kaplan dragging the, dragging it. Yeah. Then, <laughs> but I'm like, that's that's the way. I mean, I'm just thinking of like, I'm a shyster, so I'm just thinking of ways to make money. I mean, that would be if Jeff no, Kaplan's ever right. like down the road, because obviously John Romero set this up because it says that he posted it. Obviously, the eBay posting, which is how they can confirm that it's his stuff. And I love the comment on this article. One of the top comments is, "It must be nice to it must be nice to be famous in a way that you can just sign stuff you find in your attic and create value." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he just oh, saw the yeah. floppy disks, was like, "I'll throw it up for an auction," and he made three thousand bucks. I mean, he probably, like you said, he probably has multiple of them. Yeah, it's like his, his, yeah, gar- his garage copy. sale. Oh my he's god! He's selling this stuff for a few grand a pop on eBay. Like, you tell me you don't want like George Romero's sandals? Boom. <laughs> The sandals that he used to walk into the original id office (laughs) back in the early 90s? Uh, A pair of boxers that have a cum stain because he used to jack off on the long hours they were working on. He was working on Doom. Uh, The the original Doom. It's like, my God, dude. That's amazing. Yeah, that'd be crazy. I'm sure people did. Wait, hold on. Uh, I'm getting word in. New listing on eBay. Oh. Muhammad Ali's original laptop with the unpatched debut version of Roblox. $24,000. Wow. That's, I did not realize. Huh. That's very confusing. That's, that's amazing, though. I'm definitely interested. Oh, kind of makes me wonder me what's the, what, like, what the market is for just random things. Yeah. That some, things that people own, like things that celebrities own, that they're tangentially sort of involved with right because like these mm-hmm. these aren't like we said these aren't even like the original discs that you know that this wasn't like the first copy of doom 2 or something this is just a copy that he happens to have owned yeah. and it went for three thousand dollars i'm trying to think of just examples of stuff that other other famous people would find in their you know in their junk drawer and they just toss up on ebay and i bet it would sell for thousands of dollars oh absolutely no question. Um, all right. Let's... I want to I touch on this you said in chat. You said, like, you joke about selling inbox items. <laughs> Dude, that spider, if the right people knew I about know. it. People always ask about that, and I wish I would have oh, taken yeah. it. Because none of neither of us know where it is. Like, it was definitely in the prop. 
like there was a prop room, but once we, once we didn't work there anymore, it's, I mean, they're not even at that building. It probably got thrown out, but I should have, I should have taken so much shit. I <laughs> just it down the road. I feel like, yeah, if the right person knew about that, that makes some serious. I cash. mean, I'll just get a fake spider and claim that it's the real spider and Ooh. sell it. I'll say yeah, Sark will sign it, whatever. That is one of the most sellout things you can do. I mean, it's kind of fitting. I guess I can't do that because I just said it would be fake and I don't know where the real one is. We'll just delete the We'll make sure nobody hears this. <laughs> yeah, Brandon, uh, cut it now, please. Yata? Yeah, Yata. <laughs> um, all right, so this I'm very I'm actually the most excited I've ever been about the new releases section this week, Katie. Yeah, and it's... I think you guys are going to find out in a minute. This is... Go no, ahead. No filler in the new releases section this no week. Filler. No filler, yeah. So I sat down, and by the way, this had absolutely nothing to do with... Uh, getting on kind of late tonight but uh yeah i sat down to uh do my typical romp through the steam upcoming titles let's try to see if there are any promising new releases and i'll be honest nothing really caught my eye and uh if you're listening to this you know if you're one of our viewers or listeners and there's some games you know i missed out on that you want people to know about please let me know and i'll uh i'll i'll let people you know i'll, I'll shout them out on the podcast but today we only have um one game to talk about, which I thought would have been acceptable to include because it'd be like, you know, a joke entry to kind of, you know, fill in the, you know, round out the new releases. But no, this ended up being our actual only game for this section. If you can really call it a game. And uh, the only game, game bold is... enough to release the I, week of July 4th. I, exactly. Yes, the I was going to say that. And after this, we really don't. I mean, after he tells you what the century is, you'll realize that we don't. Nothing needs to come before or after this. This is exactly, exactly. what it needs to be. This is the culmination of gaming entertainment. This is yes. fitting because it's one of the most American games I've ever seen, uh, and it's called simply Fidget Spinner. And uh, going by the screenshots in the trailer, it looks like uh, you you spin a variety of fidget spinners. It records the uh, spins per swipe and uh how many spins per minute you're going at i'll read the i'll read the bio here fidget oh, the spinner. bio is so horribly written oh yeah. yeah fidget spinner comma the game you are all waiting for comma yes comma also you who are reading comma i know that in the depths of your heart comma you are waiting for a game like this that's it it's fucking <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it's under the user-defined tags are psychological, psychological horror. horror. Psychological <laughs> horror, which that I will give it. That uh, I will that's, give. that's pretty good. Man. This is a 2D game that will allow you to spin a lot of different spinners, each with its own features, with the various upgrades that you can do going forward in the game. You'll be able to, you'll be able to spin your fidget spinner at the speed of light. Features, 30 unlock Only 30?! Only thirty spinners. Only thirty spinners. Wait, you're gonna, you're gonna put this on sale on Steam, and you could really only be bothered to think of thirty different types of fidget spinners. That's I like insane. That it has four features too. Has yeah, features. you've got speed upgrade. You've got a uh, grease upgrade that reduces the spinner's angular drag, <laughs> equals spin longer. And uh, that also includes restless earnings. You will earn money also while offline. And I can only assume they mean the game's in-game currency system. I don't think there's any way you can monetize from, pay from playing yeah. Fidget Spinner on Steam. But, yeah, um, the yeah, grease yeah, upgrade. I can't tell it's you how, just... how much I think about upgrading the grease in my Fidget Spinner for some of those longer spins. Me and, <laughs> me and Angular Drag, we don't get along. No, definitely not. What if I this mean, was I've... tied something to like Bitcoin mining, where what you did was just spinning the fidget spinner? What, what, what if uh... what if fidget spinners were actually tied to the power grid? So like oh. every time every time you spin your spinner, you're actually generating excess power. Man, that would that's actually that's, a brilliant. That's idea. how we, we could do that. That would new, make it. It's the new. It's it. the new wind farm. <laughs> yeah. It's how yeah. we pay for the wall. Trump's going to give us all fidget spinners. <laughs> That's what he means by the currency. We just make so much money that we can pay for it. <laughs> restless restless oh. earnings, indeed. <laughs> oh, man. I'll, I'll link this in chat, but yeah, that's Please unfortunately don't. our only game this week. Oh, it's... I can't ban myself. Damn it. Uh, but yeah, Available July 7th. Game. No price. Can't imagine why. Yeah, I... <laughs> what even 
could be an acceptable price for this. The saddest thing Six, is that this is absolutely this is absolutely going to sell. This oh, is absolutely going to sell, main, and this guy is going to be a millionaire. Oh my god, he will. He will. he's made other games. Oh yeah, what is this? Oh. He made. Oh my god, this... Gabe Newell Simulator 2.0. Oh no. Oh, it's a third-person shooter. You're going through the <laughs> Valve offices. Oh my oh, god, this looks amazing! I the... it's it's on sale for seventy-five cents right now. If you want to get oh Gabe Newell Simulator, the trailer. Jesus Christ! It's fucking... You just uh, it's just Gabe Newell. Shooting Look at the frame rate in the trailer. Yeah, it's <laughs> literally getting five frames a second. Oh. <laughs> uh... How is that possible? Recommend a GPU, one gigabyte of video RAM. What did uh, you make this thing on? Uh, I'm wow. actually. You have. To, I have. To User look. reviews mixed. <laughs> I'm actually speechless. Oh, they're you gotta all watch the trailer reviews. if you're in the chat and check it out if you're listening. Where is 1.0? This is 2.0. This is this. I, I don't know. Well, the sale listing is just Gabe Newell Simulator, so it might have just you know they changed the title. Oh, I see. He's, he's uh, well, I mean, he did make some DLC, so I guess uh, if you're now getting the complete experience, that's 2.0. Oh, that's pretty my wild. God. Then there's also Noob Squad, which. Well, oh, this dev really is clearly not... destined for greatness. This is like. Yeah. Yeah. Simulator guy's... was his warm up. Oh, um, my God. I really. Please just listen to this about this game for this game, Nude Squad. It says, not Nude Squad, Noob Squad. <laughs> Yeah. It's an online multiplayer shooter. Are you a noob? Then prove your <laughs> no skills in this game created just for you. Noob Squad, the game that will make you feel accomplished and you will compete with other noob like you. Kids, play and begin now to enter the ranks of the losers. The only important thing is to play and have fun. Yee. And okay, then I'm about to buy Noob lose. Squad and Katie, we are playing like, <laughs> we have to play this multiplayer right, game. Right. We gotta get, I'm how many it. people can play? It looks... Oh, I hope it's co-op. I hope it's yeah, not it just says an, multi an multiplayer. It says multiplayer, but I don't. Yeah. What? Oh shit! Holy fuck! Can I play Noob Squad. Oh, is Gabe is Gabe in Simulator? Oh yeah, it's only single player. Oh, God. Oh, well, that's that's for, uh, forty-nine cents. Listen, Dead Space Three can wait. We gotta check <laughs> this shit out. Let yeah, this see. is well, fucking. Even if we could just one v one in it. Dude. Yeah, no, exactly. What, what if it turns out to be the most tactically, like the most depth of any like <laughs> shooter we've ever played? Like, look, look at the, look at the the image for the title. It's just no, a JPEG of a little kid. It's, it's. Oh my god, this has to go in chat. Yeah, just check them all out. Man, I have a fidget spinner that is literally like a, <clears throat> uh, like a ship's wheel. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh boy all right well there you go what gold see i told you we katie we didn't need anything else fidget spinner available july 7th yeah there um, you go let me let me go and purchase think, this think right. about think just think about the the seo that this game's gonna get right fidget spinner game mm -hmm. i bet he'll end up oh. in like the top listing he will, and he'll probably price it for like a dollar or two dollars, and people will be like, "All right, whatever, I'll see this yep. thing," and he'll make mm -hmm. so much money for clearly five minutes of time. But hey, that's hey, he's doing it at least. He's mad enough to do it. So, mad man, <laughs> but mad man. Oh my god, there's a recommended review for Noob Squad. Yes, this game is flawed. I admit it, but <laughs> for ninety nine cents, <laughs> it is worth it if you have friends. <laughs> I have issues with this game, and they are no servers, bad controls, which you cannot change, two different guns, and unbalanced classes. <laughs> it just goes, it's like, I also have things that I like about this game. It's only 99 cents, and that's it. No. Wow. No. <laughs> what a review. Oh, man. That literally sounds like a kid who, had 90, who has a dollar to his name on his Steam wallet, and he looks yeah. for shooters, he sorted by price. He found this. Yeah, like he's trying to, he's got buyer's remorse and he's trying to convince himself as worth it. He's doing everything he can to make uh, this okay. I think my new, my new uh, pastime is going to be going to, going to like God. bad, bad games on Steam and just reading the review section. Yeah. Most helpful <laughs> review for Gabe Newell Simulator 2.0.
not recommended, 0.3 hours on record, bought as a joke, and I'm still disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh, please. What's this guy's name? Antonio Renna. We got to keep an eye on him, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Damn. Steam is a wild Jesus. place. It, it is. All right. Don't That's listen uh, to even so the DLC real quick. I won't, one more thing. The DLC There's DLC for for the Gabe Newell simulator and it says the DLC of the game is now free. From now, everyone can play the Gabe Newell simulator DLC Gaben DLC because it is totally free. Oh. Don't miss this opportunity and prove it if you want. Oh my god. Prove what? <laughs> what are you proving? <laughs> that it's free by playing? I don't even... God, clearly English is not this... this He's inviting you language. to prove yourself, Scott. I guess prove yourself? What the, uh, and and prove I'm now... I, I don't want to drag this on, but like the description... They're all great. This is what the description for the Gaben DLC is. Titled Gaben DLC. With the Gaben DLC for Gaben Mill Simulator has added a unique and peculiar mode in which you can play by creating portals. Wait, it's just portal. Yeah, it's por- It's literally just por- <laughs> it's the portal. One screenshot is a, a portal viewing just a real-life picture of Gabe Newell, and one is a... All right, can we talk about the viewer questions, please? I, I'm getting a headache. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to move on. Uh, thank Holy you for that shit. one new release, Katie, that launched us into a world of magic. So a world, yeah, of discovery. Man, that might actually be Absolutely. have been one of the best new release sections. It was. See, I, we told you you don't have to list a bunch of weeb shit when you don't have stuff. You just didn't find one <laughs> in the game, one game that works. Oh, you can't stop me. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> our first uh, Twitter question comes from T Space Thirty Six, and he asks us, "How do you list your online friends' names in your phone?" I put their first name followed mm. by their in-game name. Example, Brandon Barndor. And then he gives us a little tongue out face. And that's a good <laughs> question. That's actually a really good question. How does this person and, have my cell phone number? Yeah, first of all, <laughs> what's going on? That's the better question. I was, I was reading that like, wait, is this one of Brandon's friends? <laughs> yeah. Um, Brandon's been uh, doxxed, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I have it as uh, Scott space hyphen space APL. And uh, Brandon's life and space volition. And this is all in the first name thing, or you or you switch it up? Oh, I just I only use the first name, you know. Well, um, so this is what I do. I go first name. So I'll do. Um, what do I actually? You know what? I'm gonna check it right now because I'm not 100 percent sure what I do. Let me see for you, KD. My phone doesn't do first last name. It's just uh like title for the person of the contact. Really, KD. I just have you in as KD Zen. For and that's your first name. Wow, Brandon. I have your full. I have your last your proper last name, Brandon. Wow, spelled properly. Believe it or hmm. not. Maybe, uh, maybe so that's that may because... sound like I'm favoring, but I'm not KD. A not little bit, you know. I mean, no, no. It's just uh, what else? What else do I have that would be hardballer? It's David, hardballer. By the way. <laughs> I know it is David. Uh, <laughs> hardballer is just hardballer. It depends. Okay, maybe I am creating a value <laughs> system. This is pretty fucked up. Well, no, it's also it, what I would call you is that I call Brandon Brandon. I call you KD. I never called you David. That's so it wouldn't true. make sense for me to put David in. Just like Hardballer, I know his name is Dan. I don't call him Dan. I call him Hardballer. So it's Yeah, you're right. It's you're all right. so like Sark in my phone is not uh is Sark, even though because I never call him Scott. So gotcha. I can see that. It. Like whatever you call them, what well, whatever you would call them to their face, what exactly. you put as, as their names in your phone. God, when I when I see you guys at LAN, what, what am I going to call you? Like, I mean, you can call me. Do you? What do you? Do you, do you call you call me APL. You don't call me Scott. Right? I, I go back and forth. I'm, I'm always. I'm never. I'm indecisive. Like, I don't know what's acceptable. I know they're both acceptable. But they're I'm both honestly. acceptable. I don't care. I just. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just have to decide. Wow. <laughs> Katie's now going to stress like, what do I call all these handles? Do I do I use their first name? No, you do whatever you want. Do whatever feels natural. It'll be fine. Um, what about you, Brandon? Do you like what do you because I feel like you would go because you're you have a very organized, structured mind. I feel like I feel like you wouldn't be able to put game hand. I feel like you would put if you know their name, you do first lane. First lane contact name. list is like a it's a series of numbers. <laughs> it's just <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm guessing. Probably, yeah, I mean, you probably won't be won't be surprised to know that yes. I absolutely put in everyone's first and last name. I knew it. Okay, um, you know the interesting right. thing. Maybe really? a little, little known tip here is uh, mm. 
depending on the phone you have, so it may not work on all phones, um, but like on iPhones, and I think uh, like if you use Gmail for your contacts, I think it works there too. Uh, you can add a nickname field. So you can put in first name, last name, That's true. and then you yeah, can put in their too. nickname, and you can yes. choose, at least on an iPhone, you can choose which one you want to show up. Mm -hmm. So like you could choose either I want the nickname to show up or I want their actual name to show up, but you can have both stored in their contact. So I have that for some people, uh -huh. um, just because for some people I, I'll put in their first and last name, but maybe I've only, I, I've only met them a few times and I don't remember their first and last name and I know them only by their, you know, their handle. So it's sometimes helpful to be able to search by either one, but yeah, I'm, so I'm, you have, I try and uh, keep it pretty organized. So you have me in your phone as my first and last name. Uh, I'm not sure if I have your phone number, but yes. I mean, I know you're... <laughs> oh, no! Yeah, you do. We, we've definitely exchanged phone numbers. <laughs> have we? Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no, my God! <laughs> I oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Katie goes to his phone and there's like a text thread with Brandon from not that long no, ago. No, yeah, no. I have I have your phone there's number. One text. Yeah, no, I have there's your phone number. Text. Yeah, I put in your first and last name. Every everyone, if I'm gonna put someone in my phone, I put in their first and last name. Like if I don't if I don't know their first last name, I won't put them in my phone. Uh, Brandon, can you do me a favor? Like it doesn't have to be this podcast. Just sometime in the future, like. For example, if I do a good segue or if like the new release section is above average, can you just say like, thanks, David? I can, like, if that's what you'd prefer. I mean, not all the time, just, you know, once. I mean, I, gen no I generally try and call people by their real names just because I feel like it's, uh, it's tough to, it's tough to, like, if you always refer to them as their online name, how do you, how do you break the seal to become real life friends? Because it, it's awkward right. to constantly call someone by, the, I think it's awkward at least, to constantly call someone by their online handle if you actually see each other in real life. Like once you know someone in real life, it's, you, just, you call them by their name. Mm. And so how do you ever get yeah. past that? Like I feel like it, it, it automatically creates a more intimate friendship if you just start calling them by their name. When you see John, do you call him meme dude? Yeah, I mean, sure. what I what I call John is is not anyone's business. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say, not gonna that. no way, not not appropriate for for a public podcast. But like, I've I've never called Scott APL. I've always called him Scott. Yeah, see, but that's because you started that way. Like, there's so many people that I'm really good friends with that call me APL and never call. That's me true. Scott. That's true. Yeah. So it, it just it, but it just feels it funny. It just depends to me. on the person, but it yeah. is no. I, I feel you. It can be funny, especially if you're not. If that's like mm. your standard, it's like if for you using somebody's name, like like you said, that's a like because if you don't like using the game handle, it just depends, I guess, on the person that you are. But I, I, I feel you on that for some stuff. So that means that tells me then in your value system, Brandon, the fact that you don't even know if you have uh, David's phone number in your phone, and that you do know. refer Actually, to the only, reason, the only reason I said that is because it's because it's so easy to get a hold of KD through other channels. Like you know, we've got a Slack group. I've got him on Steam. I've got yeah. like I have him on a bunch of other places. I very rarely text him because I just don't need to. Right. Um, so that's why I I didn't I didn't mean that like I didn't need his phone number. I just wasn't sure if I had it because we we talk a lot. But it's not right. over. It's not over the old, you know, the old telephone pipes. We talk over the internet. <laughs> right. No. I yeah. You're right. I hear you. I've often thought about occasionally sending you guys like funny pictures or memes, but I always think like you guys are like on thrones at the moment, and, and like it'll your phone will buzz like with, with a message for me. You'll go, "Oh my god, it's this guy again, Jesus." <laughs> What's funny is that is that what? what you talk about doing, Brad actually literally does. Like he texts me <laughs> garbage memes. Yeah, Brad likes to text me. He definitely does. Since he's not uh, here, I'll call him out on it. But he just he just texts me random like random trash memes. <laughs> That's just hilarious. He actually, yeah, yeah. It's like it's what I would expect well, from you, KD. But it's from Brad. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to lead by that example. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, question, good question. From that was a very yeah. good question. Very good. Yeah. Um, our next question comes from I'm not so who asked us for Smarties. Do each color have a separate taste slash flavor, or are they all the same? What is a Smartie? I had Smarties. I think I might have. Let me. Oh yeah, I've had these. You've yeah. had Smarties. Yeah, yeah. They're just it's not. Nice they're smoke kind them. of a. Wait, wait, <laughs> what? Smoke them. Smoke mm -hmm. them. No, they used to snort them. 
you know. Really? They would crush yeah. them up and snort them? Yep. It was disgusting. That is gross. Yeah. And that is not a good idea. That is sucks. I was <laughs> people would talk to me like, yo, David, you want to snort some smarties? Like, no. What the fuck are you doing <laughs> with your life? <laughs> You're just saying this is oh, see, it's pe- like kids what? doing stuff like that is why you've got to have warning labels on everything. Yep. Why? Why would you think <laughs> it's okay to snort pure sugar? Yeah, yeah. So it might have been like it, it definitely. It's definitely stopped in high school. It must have been like late middle probably, school. That sounds like, like a middle school thing that middle yeah, school kids would do. To be honest, they probably I mean, I just wanted that. to be cool. You know, probably thought doing drugs was the shit. You know, but damn, that was. Yeah. It was just so nonsensical to me. You can get a three-pound bag of Smarties on Amazon for thirteen bucks. Wow, that's a that's, lot of Smarties. Three that's, pounds of Smarties. <laughs> that is twelve dollars too much to have. That <laughs> yeah, candy. I, I'd pay a dollar for three pounds of Smarties, maybe. There's so I, don't actually, actually, I, I can't think of candy. a situation where I want three pounds of Smarties ever. No. Yeah. Unless I'm going to kill somebody. Unless I'm going, I need to have an unconventional weapon to kill somebody with. Three pounds of Smarties at like 80 miles an hour to the head could probably kill somebody. I think I would I, truthfully I, pay the same amount for like two rolls of Smarties as I would for three pounds. Mm-hmm. Because I'm gonna I'm I'm not yeah. having any more than like a roll or two. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I don't actually remember. Don't, I have I have had I mean I used to have Smarties younger when you're a kid, like that, but I can't remember. I feel like they all taste the same. I they feel definitely like all, the, all but, taste similar. I don't recall being mm-hmm. able to if to if I was in a like a blind taste test, oh. I don't think I would have been able to tell you if two no. different Smarties were different colors. Same. Then again, when's the last time you've had Smarties? It's, I mean, it's yeah, been that's... a long time to be fair. Yeah, I, I feel like I, I don't. But remember. But also, it's not. I mean, this is not exactly an innovative business. The Smarties no, candy true. company no, introduced true. in 1949, like <laughs> that product has not changed much. You you googled that right? That that wasn't just random access. Yeah, it's right. on Wikipedia, of course. Okay, okay. I thought you just why do memorized. You think, do you, why do you think I would randomly know that you can get a three pound bag on Amazon <laughs> a great for thirteen question. bucks? <laughs> That's why I was confused. I didn't realize Smarties are that old, but I guess you know once you once once you create something like that, like what do you have to do? You just keep manufacturing it forever. I bet they probably have some sort of patent on like tablet candy. Yeah, they might. Fucking smarties, dude. I don't know. I think that's in like in candy tiers. I think smarties is like a tier three candy. Absolutely tier three. They are in the same fucking tier yeah. as fucking candy corn. Fuck I'll take yeah. smarties yeah. over candy corn, but they are in the same. Yeah, tier. that's the both both are like Halloween filler garbage. Yep. Really? Yeah. yeah. And fucking tootsie rolls too. Yep. Like same. Just equally Just tootsie rolls right in there. God. That's where really the good is just talking about like shit tier candy and trying to rank them. That's where yeah, it's we always tough. yeah. All those, all three of those could just if they never if they stopped existing, nobody would give a shit, or at least sane people wouldn't give a shit. Mm-hmm. There are people yeah. that fight for candy corn, like I really like candy corn, or I really like tootsie rolls. No, you don't. You like disappointment, then, and that is a, <laughs> that's a personal issue with you that you need to get to the bottom of. It's like yeah. you, you, you're you, in your life that if you think that's a a, a candy that's even. If you would put those in tier two, I'd say that you have a lot of emotional issues that you need to solve. You need to treat yourself better. I think the you only reason issues. people would put it in a higher tier is because of the nostalgia they associate with it. Maybe. Not with the quality itself. It's with the like the memories it comes with. Exactly. Now, on the tier list of snortable candy, where do you think that's smart? <laughs> They're up there because you can get them into a powder very easily. Compared no, to like a crunch bar, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's already a crunch bar. You want the little kernels, uh, the little little. Oh, yeah. in, I mean, yeah. In terms, in terms, in terms of like tears for candy, you are able to snort. I would say it's tier one. <laughs> yeah, if you're ignoring the health ramifications, I would say you know Smarties and Pixie Sticks, pretty easy to snort. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Pixie sticks, they definitely no, like. Oh my probably, god, I mean, that's so you much. Shouldn't to snort, snort. You shouldn't snort them, but you can. Um, god. Hmm. I remember, like, I, I don't know how much it was, but I bought like you're talking about three pound bags of Smarties. I got like a 
two, three pound bag of Sour Patch Kids. That was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. Now that mm. is some tier one candy. Sour Patch Kids are tier Patch one. Kids I would are, say they're tier one. They're very good. I like Sour Patch Kids. Mm -hmm. But solid. also, again, again, I would pay the same for like one bag of, of Sour Patch Kids as I would for like five pounds. Because I can't eat five pounds True. of Sour Patch Kids. True. Yeah. Right. Okay. Someone did point out at one point, and I do know Tootsie Rolls makes a fruit flavored version of their of that, and fruit flavored Tootsie Rolls. Those are tier two. Are tier two. Yeah. But the uh, the yeah. original flavor Tootsie Roll. But are those is even not, Tootsie Roll brand? Two. Those are like I think those are a different I, brand, aren't they? I thought they were Tootsie. Maybe not. You might be right. They might be different. Tootsie Roll. I, I thought they oh, were. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just fruit shoes. Yeah. No, they're Tootsie Roll. Okay, of, uh, of course. Well, what was I thinking? Tootsie Roll Industries. Yes. As a yeah. Tootsie Roll, Roll lime, this. lemon, cherry, orange, and vanilla. Oh, vanilla. I don't know if I, it's the white one. Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize Tootsie, Tootsie Roll Industries was like a candy conglomerate. Yeah, dude. Oh, they make Smarties. No. What? Tootsie Rolls make smart. Well, it says I'm on candystore.com. Maybe not. Hold on. Let me, no, let me find I out. I don't think so. I don't think so. No. I think I was... Okay, Tootsie Roll. But they it, they do make like Andes, the Andes chocolates. They make Blow Pops. Uh, they make no. Junior Mints. Junior Mints are nice. Oh, I like Junior Mints. Junior Mints are good. good. Okay. I, like I don't think I've ever had those. All right. Yeah, so Tootsie good. Roll Industries is capable of creating. Like, they can make these higher candy. tier candy. They can do it. I feel like a good tier two, maybe even tier one. Tootsie, like what is this? I've never even seen this. Tootsie Fruit Chew Mini... Listen to this. Tootsie Fruit <laughs> Chew Mini Bite Candy Coated Chews. What a Damn. fucking name. It looks like... Oh, here, look at this product. What, what is this? I've never... This, maybe these don't, they don't make these in the U.S., but they're basically... Um, I don't know how to describe what these are. You have to take a look at these. Is, Actually, I have, to, I have to take it back. Some of the flavors of Tootsie Roll Fruit Chews are Tier 2. Yes, yeah, some, not, not all, all of them. Yeah, like yeah. I'm, if I recall correctly, the vanilla flavor, absolute trash. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, yeah, vanilla is not good. Anytime uh, I was opted with a, I would always opt against the banana flavor. Yeah, banana flavored was, candy yes, is banana, very dangerous. Not, not good. Yeah. I love banana. Banana is probably the best fruit, but like the worst fruit candy worst fruit flavor. Candy. Totally agree. That's no, no good. candy is ever able to do bananas justice. No. Yeah, I, yeah. What about uh, what about lifesavers? Where do you think those rank? Hard Ooh. and uh, chewy. I think hard lifesavers are tier one. Honestly, they're just. I like lifesavers. They're a great suck. If you want something for, you want a good suck. <laughs> I think. <laughs> All right. <laughs> for your buck, uh, lifesavers are, are up there. I agree. I, I put that, it in tier uh, one. Though I prefer yeah. the chewy. I love the lifesavers chewies. I think the uh, chewy lifesavers are chewies. definitely tier one. I like those a lot. Mm -hmm. I feel like t I feel like normal lifesavers. It's kind of an old standby. So like I would think tier one is something I would look forward to. Lifesavers are kind of like, eh, it's always been around. It's a standby. Like for the for me, that'd be tier two. Yeah. Tier okay, one's got I think fair. tier one's that's gotta fair. be something you would act like you would go and you'd buy yourself at the convenience mm. store. When have yeah. you ever when have you ever gone to the convenience store and bought a like a pack of old school lifesavers? You're right. That's definitely you can't call it tier one if you wouldn't walk in and that's like that's something you'd grab. That's something I would. You're right. It's tier two then. It's tier two for me. Last word on this topic. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No. Last word on this topic if we're if we're done. I, I just want to preach some gospel here with the one of the best tier one candies. And uh it, it's it's some big boy shit. It's not it's not cheap. It's a uh, Brookside pomegranate dark chocolate. Mm. That is A plus candy right there. Okay, I, I feel that. like if we're going to chocolate though, that's kind of a different discussion. I think a lot of chocolate is tier one just because mm. chocolate is good. Yeah, chocolate is objectively delicious. Like I don't think of chocolate's kind of a, a category <laughs> on its own, even though it is. I mean, it's technically yeah. candy, but I don't think of it in the same way as I think of like all the sugary candies we've been talking about. Okay, okay. There's a lot all of right. good chocolate out there. Definitely. Uh, that's another right. thirty. Tangent we could uh we could take if you wanted to. Well, we yeah, don't have no, time I, for that today, AD. But I think this last email <laughs> was built for you. Oh, 
Amazing. I, I have saved myself. I haven't. I have not looked at this. Oh boy, I'm excited for you to <laughs> go ahead, Katie. Uh, if you want me to? I mean, it's, it is about you. Would you feel awkward reading it? I mean, I can read well, it to you. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. I'll, got it. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll take a look. Let's see. Okay, go ahead. All right, this email is from Love Muffin. Here we go. Man, my mouth is all dry. Here we go. Gentlemen, here's a thing. I recently stumbled upon the novelization of the KB Mod screenplay based upon the novel Push by Sapphire, spelled S-A-F-F-I-R-E, in parentheses, official title. I thought you might be interested in a few tasty snippets. Oh, my God. I can't read this. Oh, boy. Katie... Katie wakes up. He's woke as heck. A classic medley of hits by Rush blares in our ears. He sits up in bed and looks down at his phone as it vibrates on the nightstand. The caller ID says family video. (laughs) Reluctantly, he answers. Katie looks ahead blankly as a muffled voice gives him instructions. (laughs) Turning off his phone, he growls. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, all right. Turning off his phone, he growls. I keep, ch- I can't, dude. I keep trying to get out, but they keep pulling me back in. At the family video, a family video video survivalist brushes off his uniform and gives KD the traditional tender kiss of greeting and gentle pats on the bottom. Here's the situation, David. We need a master memer. <laughs> oh my god! This is in quotes. I told you, I'm out of the game now. Too many dead plebs. They were just trying to imitate, and my memes burned them up like Nazis opening an arc. Katie wipes a tear from his eye and heads for the door. Suddenly, out of the employee's pick section, section, three more family video goons appear. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. We need those memes, Katie. The goons unsheath super crunk fidget spinners. <laughs> Holy fuck. Wow. Fidget spinners from their vests. And do a series of very threatening tricks. Wow. In one swift motion, Katie whips out his meme rifle. Yes! The callback. Katie whips out his meme rifle and no scopes the goons. He turns on their leader and rests the muzzle against his forehead. It's time for your Orion Dino beatdown. <laughs> oh my god, that's wow, incredible. Wow, dude. Incredible. <laughs> More employees pour out of the back room where they were seeing if we have it. <laughs> <laughs> all right let me start let me start over. more employees pour out of the back room where they were seeing if we have it in stock only to find katie gone and their comrades covered in hashtag slime does katie a no does katie go to a a denny's b a hipster donut shop or c a wing joint my question for the cast is what are your top three disney princesses love <laughs> Love muffin XOXOXOX. Wow. Holy shit. That holy fuck. That might have been the best email yeah. I've got in my time on the podcast. That was holy shit. That was shit. incredible. Love muffin bringing bringing it oh, hard. Wow. Dude. That, that was, was great. That was damn good. Very impressed. Oh. God damn it. It's time for your Orion Dino <laughs> He's fucking incredible. Oh, oh that was like they poured out of the back room while they were seeing if we have it in the stock or in back. that. This this oh, fucking KB Mod screenplay needs to become an actual movie. Oh man. my god, I'd watch the shit out of that. That would be a good uh, donation incentive for Extra Life. Is like a reenactment Ooh, of this. Of this. Oh, that actually. Oh shit, cool. that'd be good. I've thought about acting. We could do it. I mean, if we, yeah, it's a it's a little extra. It wouldn't be that hard to uh, yeah. pull together to shoot it. I just Damn. like that they're that they're referred to in the middle as family video goons. goons. <laughs> That's what they are. Oh wow, that was legendary. Thank you, Mud Muffin. Oh, Doing God. a series of very oh. threatening tricks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when he unsheathed the fidget spinner, that was oh. that was great. It's great. All Takes right. Um, the, oh. I mean, I guess we should answer the question, though. Top three Disney princesses. Hold well, on first, where does first KD all, go? Oh, yeah, you where does KD go? Oh, yeah. you know, you already know the answer. Come on, this is easy. Denny's has to be A. 
Absolutely. Honestly, yeah. There's not even competition between. I hope you're not going to no. be a hipster donut shopper it's when you're joining. I like wings, but where else are you going to be able to satisfy your hunger after an Orion Dino beatdown like that? Yeah, <laughs> then Denny's, then the All American Diner, <laughs> or America's Diner. Sorry, we should wow. perform the play at Land. Honestly, I know we should. We could make it a little play, have a camera set oh. up, and yeah, that'd be an incentive. Like maybe a that high, would be sick. That's actually a great idea. Yeah, we really should. I agree with the incentive idea. I'll have to practice for that one. Yeah. <laughs> the dialogue you have to memorize your lines <laughs> <laughs> oh man and you heard how much i struggled just now i'd have to really yeah for yeah but that was your first time reading now so you'll be able to get it, it also needs some uh, props i mean i'm not sure where we get super right. crunk fidget spinners yeah, yeah i've got a couple i can bring i've got some ammunition <laughs> oh do i have like a family video shirt around here somewhere i was gonna say do you still oh. that would be that would really sell it oh my god i i definitely have a connection there i'll see if i can i'll see what i can do uh, it wouldn't be hard just to buy a family video shirt then. I've got two months. That's true. Damn. They sell merch. <laughs> you can buy a family video shirt. Like they sell, <laughs> like, like you can oh, push a family video. Tell me, dude, tell me if you saw somebody in a family video t-shirt, you wouldn't just instinctively try to punch them in the face. I mean, I don't know. I've never been to one, so I don't really have an opinion either way. Okay. Oh, wow. Um. All right. Well, let's top three. Um. Mulan. Number one, two, and three. One definitely, yeah. Uh, that robot it's from Wally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is oh, that a right. Disney princess? I mean, hey, Disney that's owns a Pixar. strong, dependable woman. <laughs> Disney owns Pixar, so I guess. I don't what know. about the, you remember the Porsche from Cars? That was a bad <laughs> bitch. <laughs> these, are, these are not the answers I expected. <laughs> But if, what 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 should I what should I have expected from a millennial like this? Fucking Christ! <laughs> the Porsche from Cars. These uh, fucking millennial <laughs> affiliates, dude. Every fucking time. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry, dude. Just no respect for classic uh, Disney princesses. No, not at all. Mm. Here I am thinking inside the box with you know the old Pocahontas and Ariel and Cinderella. But yeah. No, exactly. we've 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 moved on apparently. Ariel for sure. Um, uh, Bell? No, nah, I feel like Bell is too basic. Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> if we're going this direction, and Jesse. That's oh, true. Man. Who's to who's to say what the qualifications for princess are? We're we're past gender. Yeah, I was just yeah. gonna say. I mean, any more? Like, but why can't? Oh wait, no. Who says he doesn't? Buzz Lightyear makes. Doesn't he like yeah. uh, get his yeah. shit knocked out and he says, yeah, I'm he a does. pretty, pretty princess? Yeah. Or some shit? Yeah. He when qualifies. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. Right. Okay. That's my answer. Dude, uh, you could Dory from Finding Nemo if you're into that <laughs> shit. <laughs> what, what is with you and all these like inanimate objects or like oh, non, I'm non, sorry. non humans? Non humans. I'm just thinking outside the box, man. Top three princess and. The Porsche from Cars. <laughs> okay. That's the only right answer. Uh, you're right. You're right. Son of a gun. Good stuff. All right. Well, wow. Good, good questions and emails uh, this week. Um, enjoyed it. Now, this would be the section where, of course, if we had our iTunes podcast review of the week, I would read it out. But I, did you guys have one last week? No. no? We're, we're in kind okay. of a review drought. You know, it almost we makes are. me wonder if... Uh, if things have changed with iTunes and their review system, like maybe maybe mm -hmm. there are no iTunes reviews anymore. Maybe maybe, maybe. we're just behind the times. But you know Could what? Be. I th I think I bet someone with an old version of iTunes somewhere can still go leave a review. So there's still I believe out there. It's possible somebody can do it. So the only thing you need to do is open up iTunes. You need to find KB Mod, the KB Mod podcast. Just search KB Mod, give us five stars, and then leave us a review. It can be something directly related to an episode you heard. It could be a story you want to tell us. There's really, it could be poetry. We've had lots of different forms. So go ahead and do that. You I think like we said, Katie's screenplay over here. Good place to do Katie's, it. Katie's, exactly. Katie's screenplay. Like we're in a drought right now. So if you write almost anything, the odds, like if you don't get in, I'll put it this way. If you write a review and we don't read it next week, it must have been so bad that you should feel bad about yourself. So I think most of you, have the ability to write something that we'll read. So the mm. bar is pretty low. Give us five stars and uh, you'll possibly be featured on the next episode. Odds are very good. 
Odds are very good. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for episode 284. Uh, you can, co- of course, go to kvmod.com, check out uh, the review that we talked about uh, a little bit earlier that Justin did. Um, uh, I, I guess it's I could say it's a roast. It's also a review of Vox Quest. Uh, obviously, use the multi-stream, check out the forums. You can follow KB Mod Gaming on Twitter, at KB Mod Gaming. You can follow Katie Zen at Katie Zen 18 Volition is at V-O-L-1-T-I-O-N. And uh, I have, of course, at APL Fisher. And yeah, thanks so much for listening. I hope you guys have a great 4th of July. I know that you'll be celebrating it, even if you're not in the U.S., because, I mean, everywhere around the world, you know, loves us. So, of course, they would want to celebrate with us, too. So uh, get your Budweiser out, uh, shoot your shoot your fireworks, and um, celebrate the greatest goddamn country in the world, okay? And we will see you back here. People are going to be like, I don't support the U.S. <laughs> podcast. This, what is what? this nationalism? No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to, you don't have to celebrate 4th of July if you don't want to, okay? Um, but, yeah, um, thanks for listening, and we will see you uh, next week. Farewell. Yatta.